Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Great Voyage. Charizard instantly kills Kaido the Beast at the beginning. Chapter 61. Beehive Island, the former headquarters of the Rocks Pirates. It was very lively at this time. There are many powerful pirates here today. Not only are the original Rocks Pirates Pirates Golden Lion, Whitebeard, Charlotte Lingling, and Kaido. There are also the powerful Roger, Rayleigh, and Java Sparks of the Roger Pirates. Even Sha Chi, the strong man in the New World, etc. The battle at this time has been going on for three days. They were the only contestants in the finals. But it can be seen that these people are a little disappointed. I thought that Guy Gowther was back, but it seems that your appeal, Shi Ji, is just that. Whitebeard frowned. He originally wanted to see how big the gap was between him and Gowther in this final. But he didn't expect that Gowther didn't come at all. What a pity. Roger touched Ace on his waist. He originally wanted to compete with Gowther in swordsmanship. But Gowther didn't come at all, which made him extremely regretful. Will you be able to defeat him when he comes? Roger. Kaido looked at Roger. He didn't believe that Roger had the strength to defeat Gowther. If he really did, then he wouldn't have been defeated so miserably in the Valley of Gods. Have you underestimated me? I, the Golden Lion, am the one destined to become the champion of today's competition. The Golden Lion felt a little unhappy when he heard all these people talking about Gowther. You know, he, the Golden Lion, is the protagonist today, not Gowther. This competition was organized by him to make himself famous in the New World, not to Gowther. Thinking of this, Golden Lion Shiji touched the two ordinary swords on his waist, and the resentment in his heart deepened. He did not forget that his Yingxi and Kumu were killed by Gowther in the Valley of Gods. After being snatched away, he could only use two ordinary swords. Since no one is coming, let's start a war. Whitebeard looked at it and saw that there was no sign of Gowther coming, so he proposed to start a decisive battle. Good. Roger agreed. Good. Charlotte Lingling agrees. Agree. Kaido agreed. With so many voices of approval, the strongest pirate war that concerns all pirates broke out here. And how could the Navy not receive news about this matter? Cyborg at this time Kong, is leading Garp, Zepha, and warring states to spy on the sea not far away 27. I wonder if he will come. Garp said, but did not say his name. But the entire Navy, including Cyborg Kong, knew who he was talking about. It was none other than Gowther, the Dragon Controller. The only man who defeated the entire Navy. This is the last day, he will definitely not come again. Cyborg Kong said the conclusion. He was blasted into the mountains by Gowther. But fortunately, he had a body of steel and iron bones, so he did not die, but even so he was seriously injured. That's not necessarily the case. Warring states uttered these words. Everyone was silent for a while. After all, Gowther is always so unexpected. He unexpectedly disappeared for five years and unexpectedly appeared in the Valley of Gods. None of them could have expected whether Gowther would appear. At the scene, the Golden Lion was a little depressed. This was obviously a competition planned by him. But now he couldn't help but make the decision. Suddenly, a black shadow flashed past. The Golden Lion only heard a sinister voice appearing in the air. I want to participate in the competition too. You're done, no. The Golden Lion was furious now and refused without thinking. But as soon as he refused, he was greeted by a sword energy. Although the Golden Lion subconsciously used his sword to defend, he was still blown away more than 10 meters. Red Count Burr E. Clydefield. Roger called out his name. The man in front of him was obviously Ji Yu Gao Ji Hong. It was rumored that he was the top strongman in the sea more than 10 years ago. His strength can be said to be unfathomable. Am I welcome, everyone? The Red Earl walked away from the shadows, and everyone saw his full face clearly. He had a tall and thin figure, with white hair braided into two braids hanging on his shoulders. He wore a plum red shirt and blood red trousers, black leather shoes with gold rims on his feet, and a wide blood colored cloak on his body. He held a slender bat handled umbrella in his hand, and had an evil smile on his face. No one said anything, but looked at the Red Earl warily. Although the Red Earl is famous, his reputation is not very good. Because he is powerful, and he often takes advantage of his strength to kill people. That made many powerful pirates fear him. 
Just let me come and meet you. Kaido has obviously never heard of the reputation of the Red Earl. He planned to come up and fight with the Red Earl. But the Red Earl just glanced at Kaido and then instantly came behind Kaido with a ghostly figure. Directly. He punched out. Even Kaido, a demon, couldn't hold on. He was knocked unconscious and fell to the ground. Kaido turns out to be no enemy of Aikido either. Everyone was surprised for a moment. Whitebeard and Roger were not too surprised. You know, the Red Earl can fight against the guys of their pirate group with his own strength. He can be said to be the villain of the New World. He is powerful. The level is naturally not comparable to Kaido's. I'll challenge you. Charlotte Lingling saw Kaido's attack failed, and immediately walked out. She took out the sword Hosmi, and then covered the sun Hosmi on the sword. Then she slashed at the Red Earl with one knife. The Emperor's sword breaks the edge. The momentum of this sword was extraordinary. But the Red Count remained unmoved. I saw him using an umbrella as a sword, and a powerful sword energy burst out from the umbrella sword. Then there was a scarlet sword energy, which directly hit Sha Sha. Luo Te Lingling's Emperor sword broke through the blade and slashed directly on her body. Charlotte Lingling was knocked away by the sword energy. There was a bloody mouth on her waist. If she hadn't had an amazing physique as a giant, she would have been hit. She had already died under the sword of Count Shanghong. Asshole. The Golden Lion used the power of Piao Piao fruit to directly levitate the rocks on the ground. He was suspended in the sky. Like a god. Do you know the consequences of angering my Golden Lion? Golden Lion Chi Ji looked at the Red Earl angrily. He didn't expect to lose to Gowther. Now he lost to an unknown strong man. Thinking of this, he decided to show off his sword skills. Let the man in front of him the man in red clothes looks what happens if he pisses off his golden lion. Lion Senkiri Valley. The golden lion used the Lion Senkiri Valley. Countless golden sword lights were seen flying towards the Red Count. But the Red Count was not afraid of danger. He picked up the red umbrella in his hand and struck back with a sword. Countless red sword lights were wrapped around the his sword fell on his body. Then he shot his sword into the sky, directly splitting the rock on which the golden lion sat down into two. It has no effect. The golden lion was a little horrified. He didn't expect that his strongest swordsmanship would have no effect on the red earl in front of him. But soon he became even more panicked. He saw the red earl flying through the air and jumping directly in front of the golden lion. Then came a punch. Boom. The extremely powerful force hit the golden lion's cheek. The golden lion's teeth broke directly in the air. Several of them were thrown away. That's all your anger, golden lion. The red earl said with some disdain. The golden lion was also defeated. Riley looked at the red earl and was slightly startled. He didn't expect the red earl to be so powerful. Not only did he defeat Kaido and Charlotte Lingling, but he also beat up the golden lion Shiji. He looked at Luo Captain J and Whitebeard. Now the only ones on the field who can defeat the Red Earl are the two of them. Roger stepped forward. And Rayleigh also wanted to follow. But Roger refused. Rayleigh, this is a duel between men, you don't want to participate. Riley suddenly figured it out. This is an arena competition. Obviously, it is not like the ship battles of the past, where you can do whatever you want. Red Earl, let me, Roger, challenge you. Roger's mouth was filled with a confident smile. And Red Earl Brewery Clydefield also grinned. For him, the two most valuable opponents this time are Roger and Whitebeard. Now Roger is outstanding hand. He can take a good look at the strength of Roger, the strong man in the new world. Bang. Roger pulled out Ace, one of the twelve skills of the Supreme Sharp Sword, from his waist, and directly fought with the Red Earl. A blow. The Red Earl picked up the Red Umbrella Sword and was not to be outdone. Dang, only a soft groan of metal interlacing was heard. This was the strongest person among all the people present who could withstand the Red Earl's sword. But it was only one blow. The sword. I saw the Red Earl punching with his left hand. Roger resisted with his arm. In an instant, Roger was hit by this huge force and took several steps back. Roger, you are good at swordsmanship, but not at physical skills. The Red Earl mocked. Then he punched one after another. Roger was beaten and retreated. Finally, he had no choice but to put away the ace in his hand. This meant that he gave up. Even Roger lost. Everyone was stunned for a moment. 
you must know that Roger, Whitebeard, and Golden Lion are recognized as the three strongest in the New World. But at this time, two of them lost to the Red Count. Doesn't that mean that there is only one person on the scene who can turn the tide? In an instant, everyone turned their attention to Whitebeard. After seeing it, Whitebeard turned his attention to the Red Earl. There was no one among the cadres of the Rocks Pirates. Cowardly. Although they are all separated from rocks now, it does not mean that they will retreat. Whitebeard picked up Kong Yunchi, which is the famous sword of Roger and the Twelve Supreme Sharp Swordsmen. Red Earl, let me discuss with you. Whitebeard looked at the Red Count with firm eyes. Edward Newgate, Whitebeard, I have heard of your name. The Red Count slapped his forehead and remembered who Whitebeard was. Then he stabbed out with his umbrella sword. Whitebeard did not dare to neglect picked up Kong Yunchi and started fighting with the Red Count's umbrella sword. The two weapons were mixed together. There was a huge roar. Boom. The entire beehive island was shaken. Countless bricks and stones fell here and shattered. Your swordsmanship is pretty good, but I wonder how your physical skills are. The Red Earl punched Whitebeard. But Whitebeard smiled after seeing it. His left arm clenched tightly and a white ball of light appeared in his hand. This was the shocking fruit he had recently realized. Ability. Air shock. I saw this white ball of light traveling with Whitebeard's fist. Then he punched hard towards the Red Earl. The fists of the two collided in the air. Then the entire beehive island began to violently the shock. I saw that the Red Earl's fist began to twist. But it recovered quickly. Then he continued to hit Whitebeard hard, directly breaking the light ball in Whitebeard's hand. This body is really weird. Whitebeard looked at Whitebeard, and finally had to step back to avoid the punch of the Red Earl. But this did not mean that he planned to admit defeat. He punched towards the ground. The ability to shake the fruit was guided by him. Underground. I saw that the land in front of Whitebeard began to fragment layer by layer. The center of the fragmentation was the Red Earl. And there was an extremely strong white shock wave in the center of the crack. Don't underestimate my speed. The Red Earl looked at it and sneered. He was seen stepping on the gravel and walking freely on the gravel with his light body. In the end, he walked directly to Whitebeard. All this took only a few seconds. He covered a distance of hundreds of meters in a few seconds. 740 is really scary. Roger looked at the Red Count and couldn't help but said bitterly. He didn't expect that his physical skills would become a weakness in the eyes of the Red Count. His physical skills were obviously not weak. He was even the strongest in the sea. But in front of the Red Earl, his physical skills are simply not worth mentioning. Not only the strength and swordsmanship, but also the speed. Kaido's face was a little embarrassed. You must know that he has the physique of a demon. But even this is not worth mentioning in front of the Red Earl. If anyone can defeat the Red Earl, I think it's only Gowther. Kaido couldn't help but think of Gowther. The Red Earl in front of him was too perverted. He believed that only the more perverted Gowther could defeat the Red Earl. Gowther, even he can't do it. Golden Lion Shiji heard Kaido's words in his ears and couldn't help but frown. In his opinion, he was knocked down so easily. How could Gowther defeat him? Kaido looked at the Golden Lion was silent. In her opinion, Golden Lion Shiji was a bit deceiving himself. Although he had been defeated by Gowther so many times, he still thought that he was as strong as Gowther. Boom. I saw Whitebeard launch a shock wave attack again. He knocked it in the air with his hand, and the Red Earl was instantly hit by the wave. A wave wall appeared in front of him. This wave wall can be said to be visible to the naked eye. But the Red Earl turned a blind eye. And he resisted the pressure and walked towards Whitebeard step by step. Every time he took a step, some sweat stains appeared on Whitebeard's forehead. Until, the Red Earl walked in front of Whitebeard. Edward Newgate admits that you are strong, but not strong enough. The Red Earl showed an evil smile. Then he punched Whitebeard in the chest. Whitebeard was directly hit by this huge force and flew backwards. He crashed into the giant mountain of Beehive Island. Middle. Daddy with Whitebeard. For a moment, members of the Whitebeard pirates came over and shouted to Whitebeard desperately. They were all homeless orphans. Only Whitebeard was willing to accept them, give them food and drink, and protect them. So they were willing to call Whitebeard dad. Gu la la la, dad is okay. Whitebeard smiled despite his injuries. This was the family he was looking for. But all the pirates around him were silent. 
Because to a discerning eye, it seemed that Whitebeard had lost, and the strongest one was the Red Earl. But the Red Earl instead of leaving, he chose the next pirate to fight. However, these pirates were not as powerful as Whitebeard, and each of them could only be beaten to death by the Red Earl. Seeing this scene, Kaido was naturally quite unwilling. There is someone who can defeat him. Kaido said to the others. But everyone else was silent. They all knew who Kaido was talking about, but that person was not there. But they didn't know that Gowther was already riding a fire-breathing dragon away from the Beehive Island. Getting closer. It can be said that it is very close. Under the afterglow of the setting sun, a figure riding a dragon flew across the sky. This quickly aroused the vigilance of the navy. They immediately contacted Cyborg Kong, Garp, Zepha, and Sengoku. Gowther the Dragon Rider. It can be said that Gother's appearance and Cyborg Kong can no longer be forgotten. After all, he was the one who defeated him. And he also angered the entire navy and the world government. Not only Cyborg Kong, but also Garp and the other two have the same impression of Gowther. It is also extremely profound. After all, Gowther has persecuted them in a certain sense. Marshal Kong, should we pursue him? Sengoku first asked Cyborg Kong. He was a little curious whether Cyborg Kong wanted them to pursue him. No. Cyborg Kong shook his head and refused, and then he told his reason. Do you know who the figure was that passed by before? Cyborg Kong asked about the three garps. Warring states knew that Cyborg Kong was asking about a figure who walked past Gowther. He shook his head. He didn't know who the man in bright clothes was. Garp, seeing that Zeng Guo didn't recognize him, Zepha naturally shook his head. That's Red Count Burry Clydefield. Cyborg. Kong fell into memories and said, he is an extremely powerful pirate. I once competed with him at that time, but lost. Marshal Kong was also defeated. This sentence made the three of them look at each other. Although Cyborg lost to Gowther in the air, he is still the Navy's number one combat force. But even he lost to the Red Earl and sighed for it. That's enough. The power of the Red Earl. So Gowther can't win. Cyborg Kong said categorically. He didn't believe that Gowther could defeat the Red Earl. After all, the Red Earl was so powerful. The three Garps looked at Beehive Island. To be honest, they had lost to Gowther so many times. They no longer had any confidence. I can only sigh. I hope so. Is this what you call powerful pirates? Is there anything stronger? The Red Earl gave a crazy smile and looked at the many pirates on Beehive Island. Most of these pirates looked gloomy. Although they have extremely powerful pirates such as Roger, Whitebeard, and Golden Lion. As long as they unite, they can beat the Red Earl. But this is a competition after all, and since the Red Earl has won. Then they will naturally not do this kind of bullying. Especially Whitebeard and Roger, they both think that they are quite moral pirates. Red the Earl showed an evil smile. His goal has been achieved. He, the Red Earl, is the strongest pirate in the world. But in front of him, there are just a group of weaklings. Now he has only one goal. He took out a reward order. The target that appeared above was Gowther, with a bounty worth 10 billion. As long as he defeated Gowther, he could truly become the most powerful pirate. Thinking of this, his blood almost trembled. And just as he was obsessed when I couldn't help but put this reward notice on my cheek, a cold voice came from the air. Who made you do such a disgusting thing to my reward order? When they heard this familiar voice, everyone cast their eyes into the air. A young man riding a fire-breathing dragon appeared in the sky above Beehive Island. For a moment, the entire Beehive Island was excited. Roger. Whitebeard. Golden Lion. Kaido. Rayleigh. Even everyone turned their attention to Gowther. Now only he can defeat the Red Earl. Gowther pulled out two famous swords, Yingju and Kumu, from the system space. The Golden Lion suddenly burst into tears. Because this is his sword. Although he thinks that he will never be able to get these two swords back from Gowther in his life. But this is his sword. You are also a great swordsman. The Red Earl picked up his umbrella sword and looked at the sword in Gother's hand in surprise. He couldn't help but chuckled. You must know that he defeated too many great swordsmen today. You haven't answered me yet. Gowther looked at the Red Earl with cold eyes. To be honest, he was a little surprised that the world government had awarded him such a high bounty of 10 billion. 
but he was even more surprised that the Red Earl appeared on Beehive Island. The Red Earl Baloric Clydefield, the great pirate who escaped from Impel Down in the future. He should not have eaten the Phantom Beast Vampire Fruit now. Yowther looked at the Red Earl. The Red Earl is not yet completely victorious. But he heard the Red Earl's words, and he can provoke all the pirates present. And all the pirates present did not refute. This means that, he defeated all the pirates present. Thinking of this, combined with the Red Earl's action of placing a bounty on him, Gowther understood that the Red Earl's next target must be him. There is nothing easy to answer. Dragon Rider Gowther accepts my challenge. I will defeat you and prove that I am the strongest pirate in the world. The Red Earl smiled, and the gold necklace at the corner of his mouth kept shaking. He picked up the umbrella sword, and the umbrella sword instantly surged with bright red sword energy. He waved it at Gowther, and a huge crimson sword he attacked Gowther with anger. Snort. Gao Se snorted coldly. Before today, he might have been in trouble because of the Red Earl's sword energy. But now he has raised the Lion Senkiri Valley to the top level. This means that the Red Earl's sword energy anger is simply not enough in his eyes. What trick is he going to use? Could it be the captain's sword skills? Riley looked up at Gowther. He thought that even if Gowther wanted to use a sword move, he should use their Captain Rogers move. After all, this move is the only way to defeat the Red Earl. But Roger was shaken when he saw it. Shaking his head. Obviously the sword skill used by Gowther was obviously not his move. What is that? Could it be that Gowther learned it newly? I heard that Gowther used a new sword skill in the Valley of Gods. Whitebeard suddenly thought of the conversation with the slave that day. It was precisely because of this conversation that Whitebeard knew that Gowther could actually chop a tiger out of his sword. And it was extremely powerful. This is my lion Senkiri Valley. The golden lion suddenly shouted. Everyone turned their attention to the golden lion. But most of their eyes showed disbelief. They didn't believe that after knowing so many powerful sword moves, Gowther would still use the golden lion's sword skills. Stop talking nonsense, how could it be yours? Riley replied questioningly. In his opinion, the golden lion was trying to put gold on his face. How could Gowther use the Golden Lion's sword skills after mastering so many powerful swordsmanship? You know the Golden Lion just lost to the Red Earl with this move. It was still the kind that was completely bruised. But it's really mine. The Golden Lion was on the verge of tears. He didn't expect that he told the truth, but no one believed him. Until Gother's slash came out. I saw a Golden Slash heading towards Hong the Earl attacked. In an instant, he cut off the Red Earl's sword energy in the air, and then cut it towards the Red Earl's chest. The sword light cut off the flesh, revealing the dense white bones. Hiss. Such a tragic injury made the Red Count take a breath. But with his amazing physique, he quickly recovered from the injury. The Red Count instantly understood that he could not defeat Gowther with his sword skills. He could only looking for another way. I saw the Red Earl throwing the umbrella sword into the air and shooting directly towards the fire-breathing dragon at Gother's feet. Quite brave. Gowther saw the Red Earl's move, and he immediately knew that the Red Earl was trying to force him back. Thinking of this, he simply knocked down the Red Earl's umbrella sword with one sword. He jumped directly from the air. This was a close call. Thousands of meters in the air. But for Gowther, such a small amount of counter-shock power is simply incomprehensible. This sword skill is really that of the Golden Lion. There were many great swordsmen present. When they saw Gother's sword skills, they quickly recognized that this was the signature sword skill of the Golden Lion. But the power was not there is a difference between cloud and mud. Golden Lion Shiji was a little embarrassed when he saw it. It was obvious that Gao's was the guy who stole the sword skills. But he was made to endure this embarrassment. Gowther improved that trick. Roger couldn't help but sigh. Gother's move could be described as a genius. If he can defeat the Red Earl, then there is no doubt that the next era will belong to Gother's era. Boom. Gowther was currently fighting with the Red Earl. It's just that the Red Earl belongs to the side that is passively beaten. After real contact, the Red Earl realized that Gother's own combat power was simply terrifying. If he had only failed in swordsmanship just now, then it could be said that he had failed in both swordsmanship and physical skills now. His only option now is to escape. Thinking of this, the Red Earl used extremely superb speed to slip away from Gother's hands. 
still want to escape. Gowther didn't expect that the Red Earl couldn't beat him and actually wanted to escape. But the Red Earl's speed was not enough in his eyes. He directly grabbed the Red Earl's hand. Then he punched him in the face. Superior. Didn't you just want to have a good fight with me? What are you running for? Gowther punched the Red Earl in the face one after another. Even if the Red Earl covered his face with armed domineering energy, it was of no avail. Gowther punched hundreds of times in a row. Only then did he receive the system prompt. You defeated the Red Earl and gained 300,000 experience points. There are actually 300,000 experience points. Gowther smiled. He didn't expect that the Red Earl was worth so many experience points. If he hadn't left soon, he would have beaten him once a day. Wouldn't the experience points be used up every day? And by Gowther was calm and relaxed. Whitebeard and the others were full of surprise. They thought Gowther would win, but they didn't expect that Gowther would win so easily. That was the Red Earl, the Red Earl who defeated top powerhouses like Roger, Whitebeard, and the Golden Lion. So defeated. Not only them, but the other participating pirates around them all looked in disbelief. They didn't expect that the matter would be resolved so easily. And the only effort that Goosefei used was three punches and two kicks. What else is he going to do? Suddenly they saw Gowther walking over. Gowther looked at Whitebeard, Roger, Golden Lion, and everyone in Kaido. Gowther grinned and said, I will take five minutes to deal with you. If you want to come on, the one with the reputation of being the strongest pirate, let's see who of you can defeat me. He actually wants to challenge us all. Even the Red Earl wouldn't dare to do this. Gowther, isn't he afraid of failure? For a moment, all the pirates on Beehive Island were excited. He didn't expect that Gowther would try to challenge them all. And he planned to defeat them in only five minutes. The winner could even get the title of the strongest pirate. Thinking of this, they all went crazy. You must know that in the new world, pirates are not only for treasure but also for bounty. In addition, they are just for a name. And now they have everything after defeating Gowther. Think of it at this, everyone felt a burst of joy. Is he too showy? How dare you do this? Riley looked at Gowther and couldn't help but feel excited. This seems to be his style otherwise he wouldn't be able to attack the Valley of Gods. Roger agreed with Gother's move. The strongest pirate. Looks like I, the White Beard, have to compete too. Whitebeard smiled boldly and looked at the members of the Whitebeard pirates behind him. They looked at him expectantly. Now he is their father. Even for these crew members, he has to fight for the title of the strongest. The title of the strongest pirate must be mine. The Golden Lion looked at Gowther. He thought he was the most ambitious guy. He must be the strongest pirate. For a time, countless ambitious pirates launched an attack on Gowther. But Gowther just punched and kicked the pirates unconscious. Gowther began to harvest experience crazily. Just after Gowther defeated most of the pirates. Riley attacks him. Gowther jumped over his sword and threw him over his shoulder. You defeated Riley and gained 50,000 experience points. Just when Gowther defeated Rayleigh, Kaido rushed up. He was also not polite to his old rival Gowther. A punch hit Kaido directly on the forehead. Then with a kick, Kaido flew directly to the mountain in the distance. Boom. The mountain peak cracked instantly and was divided into pieces of stones. You defeated Kaido and gained 100,000 experience points. Lion Senkiri Valley. The golden lion Shi Zhao Zhao Hao Ji flew towards him with a sword, and Gao Se returned the sword with his sword. The golden lion was directly slashed away by Tong Tong's slash. Air shock. Whitebeard attacked with a punch that shook the fruit. Gowther just raised the corners of his mouth slightly, and then fought hard. Whitebeard finally lost after a moment of wrestling. You defeated Whitebeard and gained 200,000 experience points. And you, Roger. Gowther looked at Roger, and Roger's eyes collided with his at this time. Roger rushed forward fiercely. Then he slashed out with a sword. Gowther also struck back with a sword. Two sword lights were in the air. Collision. For a moment, the entire beehive island began to shake and shake. Gowther looked at the time, and now he had 60 seconds left. Thinking of this, Gowther did not hold back. He used his most powerful move. Lion Senkiri Valley. I saw a semicircular sword light slashing away with one sword. Roger was completely defeated and kept retreating. Finally he fell to the ground. 
You defeated Roger and gained 200,000 experience points. So far, Gowther has gained 2 million experience points. He deeply felt that this trip was worthwhile. I glanced at the time travel that was about to begin in about 10 seconds. After thinking for a moment, Gowther finally said this. Goodbye after 40 years. After Gowther finished saying this. The time has also come to count down. As time reaches zero. Gother's figure turned into a ray of light and disappeared. But the rest of the people looked at each other in shock. Most of them didn't hear what Gowther said. Only a few people heard the demon. But he also looked confused. Since then, Gother's reputation as the strongest pirate has not only disappeared. For several consecutive years, Gother's reputation was well known. But many people are wondering why Gowther disappeared. But they didn't know that Gowther had already arrived 40 years in the future. It is 1520 in the Haiyuan calendar. On a sea under calm waves. Gowther was teleported to the middle of the sea. If he hadn't been so powerful, he would have stepped onto a neighboring island with his moon steps. He will inevitably end up like a drowned rat. Where is this place? The new world is still the world. Gowther looked at the rippling blue sea, a little confused. He didn't know where he was now. But he could extract his first elf after traveling through time and space. System, I want to extract elves. Gowther reminded the system, knowing that he has already reached the level of an elite trainer. This means that he can draw new elves. If the system hadn't said that after the system is updated, he can draw better ones again. Elf. Gowther won't wait until now. Received the host. Now, the elves are being drawn for you. Congratulations to the 740 host, you have obtained the champion level potential elf Yukiras. Champion level elf. Gowther was a little stunned. He didn't expect that the elf he won this time was a champion level. He couldn't help but ask the system. System, who has higher potential, the king level or the champion. Host, champion level potential is a potential level above the king level, and champion level elves are more worthy of training. Is this so? Gowther was a little excited. He didn't expect that just after traveling through time and space, the system would give him such a big gift. You know, Vankilas, the final form of the evolution of young Hilas, is a quasi-god. The racial value alone is more than the Yusan family, not to mention they can also super-evolve. Thinking of this, he quickly opened the attribute panel of Yukilas. Name, Yukiras. Gender, female. Potential, championship level. Level, level 1. Attributes, rock system, ground system. Traits, perseverance. Skills, bite, stare. The current young Hilas is indeed too immature. Gowther looked at Yukiras and planned to use experience points to upgrade Yukiras. Thinking of this, Goth opened his attribute panel. Host, Gowther. Occupation, elf trainer. Elf, Charizard, Blastoise, Bulbasaur, young Kilas. Skills, sixth form of the navy, advanced, Shishi Senkaria, top, Kamabushi, intermediate, Torahiru, intermediate. Domineering. Armed color domineering top level, wisdom color domineering top level, overlord color domineering top level. Experience points, 613 million points. Elf points, 0 points. I actually have 6 million experience points now. Gowther was a little surprised. He didn't expect that he had so much experience. Thinking of this, he tried to invest 2 million experience points into Yukiras. Then Yukilas changed. Your Yukilas level has been raised to level 20. Congratulations to the host, your young Kiras has learned sandstorm, screeching sound, and gradually breaks through, rock avalanche. Your CHDJ Rus level has been raised to level 40. Congratulations to the host, your young Karoth has learned the ghost face and made a big fuss, the wave of evil. Your Yukilas level has been raised to level 60. Congratulations to the host, your young Karoth has learned to fight tooth for tooth, bite to pieces, and earthquake. Your young Karoth has undergone a strange change. He evolved into Shakirath. Your Shakiras undergoes strange changes and evolves into Vankiras. Can the level be upgraded to level 60 at most? Gother looked at the maximum level of experience points and frowned slightly. The host can become the master trainer if he has 6 level 60 elves, and the level of the elves will be unlocked naturally. The system gave the answer. Gowther could only smile bitterly. It seemed that he could only improve his levels one by one. 
After all, he has enough experience points to support three elves to reach level 60. But before he could think about it, the system sounded the system task again. Release task. The host will super evolve Bankulas and get the next elf draw reward. You actually have to super evolve Bankiras. Yowther was a little surprised. He didn't expect that the difficulty of obtaining the next elf had increased. Now he had to let Bankulas evolve. Looking at Bankula's 6 meter long height and breathtaking posture. Yowther smiled. He believed that Bankulas would definitely bring a new journey to the world of navigation. Whitebeard, Kaido, Charlotte Lingling, you are waiting in the new world. I, Gowther, am back. Gowther laughed and looked at the sky in the distance. Then he thought of the navy and the world government. The death fruit must be the handiwork of the world government. I will bear this grudge. But my top priority now is to know where this is. Gowther thought of this, and he began to search for ships on the sea. Finally he saw a pirate ship in the distance, which would have been avoided by ordinary people. But Gowther was a pirate from the Rocks Pirates. Not afraid of ordinary little pirates, he jumped directly onto the pirate ship in one step. Gowther saw many pirates around him, but he didn't pay attention. He planned to go directly to find the captain of this pirate ship. Ask him where this place is. But at this moment, a commotion suddenly appeared on the ship. The little thief cat stole our treasure, you must catch him. For a time, the entire pirate ship became lively. But Gowther stood aside and watched the show. When he heard the name Little Thief Cat, he already knew where it was. This must be in the East China Sea. And he also used his keen knowledge and domineering to locate the Little Thief Cat. He suddenly found that the Little Thief Cat was hiding in the wooden barrel next to him. So he stepped forward and knocked on the barrel with his hand. He saw the barrel quivering for a while. It shook, but after a while there was no sound. Little Miss Cat, I know you are in there, please come out now. Gowther directly exposed Nami's hiding place. The barrel shook and tried to fall down and slip away. Gowther held the barrel with one hand. Then, a man stood out from the middle of the barrel. A pure beauty with short orange hair holding the package. She looked at Gows with a wary expression. She grasped the package tightly with her slender palms. I'm not here for your stolen treasure. When Gowther saw Nami's expression, he immediately understood that the other party recognized him as the pirates who wanted to recover her stolen treasure. But Gowther did not look down upon these treasures. His only purpose was to make Nami. His crew. After all, Nami has an extremely superb talent as a navigator. With her and Gows, she can sail the sea unimpeded. But this is obviously only one of the reasons. The second reason is that Nami is more eye-catching. Gowther spends time with elves like Benkulas every day. He is starting to become weird. He needs some beautiful beauties to make him feel happier. All in all, Nami is the navigator he likes. Say will not let her escape. So what are you in for? Nami was a little confused. This was the first time she heard such words. According to her past experience, these people who came to chase her were all trying to get the treasure back. They even blackmailed her. But the man in front of her was not interested in the treasure. But he came to her for other things. Seeing Nami lost in thought, Gowther decided to tell her directly. I want you. Want me. Nami's face turned dark when she heard these dangerous remarks. She didn't expect that Gowther would say such bold words. She is not such a casual girl. Although Gowther is indeed very handsome, she doesn't just look at her appearance. A woman, you know, she is burdened with the burden of collecting 100 million belly. I want you to be my navigator. Navigator, are you a pirate? Nami's face turned darker when she heard this. He didn't expect that Gowther was actually a pirate. Although she was also a pirate of the Dragon Pirates, she was forced to do so. And those who care about human life and are evil the pirates are different. I don't agree. After hearing that Gowther was a pirate, Nami rejected Gother's request. She would rather give up the treasure than become an accomplice of the pirates and become a navigator with the pirates. But Gowther looked calm. He knew Nami's weakness. Thinking of this, he said directly to Nami's back, Do you want Bailey? I have a lot of Baileys here. Nami paused and turned to look at Gowther fiercely. I don't believe it, you have a lot of Baileys, after all, your clothes are so tattered. Clothes in tatters. This was the first time Gowther looked at his clothes since time travel. 
He clearly remembered that his clothes were fine but there was something wrong with them. But at first glance, they were really in tatters. This should be caused by time travel. Yowther thought about the reason. Then he looked at Nami, and he decided to use his money power to conquer her. You must know that he had gained a lot of baileys in the Valley of the Gods. The price is worth 100 billion. Thinking of this, he casually took out a helmet made of pure gold from the system space. Look what this is. Nami wanted to turn away and leave, but she still couldn't hold back the curiosity in her heart. She looked back at Gowther and was attracted by the golden helmet in Gother's hand. She is a little thief cat. Some have collections. She would carefully select valuable stolen goods and sell them to black market merchants. In this way, she could get more baileys. She identified the helmet's value at a glance. Three million baileys, not five million baileys. Nami estimated the price of the golden helmet in Gother's hand at a glance. Then she walked towards Gowther involuntarily. You figured it out, be my navigator. Gao Se looked at Nami with a smile. But when Nami heard this, she hesitated again. She moved her steps lightly and wanted to leave in front of Gao Se. But Gao Se saw her bravery. Thinking of her own system space but there are countless treasures in Bailey. To be honest, this golden helmet is just a piece he picked up casually. It can be said that there are golden helmets like this in his system space. Thinking of this, Gowther plans to give it to Nami. Execute the one-time banknote ability. Yes, the banknote scarf. Gowther snapped his fingers, and all the treasures in the system space poured out. For a time, the entire pirate ship was flooded by Bailey and gold. This, you did it this way. Nami looked at Gowther in surprise. She didn't understand how Gowther did it. Could it be because he snapped his fingers? But Nami also imitated Gowther in snapping his fingers, not to mention such a lot of baileys. Not a single pele popped out. If I get that golden sword, I can collect 100 million belly. Nami looked at a golden sword in the treasure. She saw that the sword was made entirely of gold, with many rubies inlaid on it, and there were also, 350, many precious materials. It was worth a lot at first glance. It must be worth at least 30 million baileys. Baileys and gold were spread all over the pirate ship like a river. Nami felt like she was swimming in the river. Finally she got the hilt of the golden sword. But before she could take it away, Gowther came to her and held her hand. How about it? Have you considered becoming my navigator? Gathel looked at Nami. But Nami remembered the teachings of her mother Belmir at this moment. Never sell yourself for money. She shed tears and refused with a smile. I disagree. This sentence seemed to use up all her strength, and she even regretted it. Gowther was not surprised when he heard this. If Nami betrayed herself for money, then he would underestimate her. Since money can't buy it, Gowther snapped his fingers. The ship full of gold and silver treasures disappeared like a stream. These gold and silver treasures returned to Gother's system space. Nami also turned around and planned to leave. But Gowther was inexplicable. It felt wrong. Logically speaking, Nami, the little thief cat, shouldn't be so honest. Thinking of this, he used his knowledge and knowledge to sense. He found that Nami actually took away a pair of diamond gloves from him. Those gloves were also valuable. Gowther was a little helpless. If he took one more step, Nami would definitely take his diamond gloves to the black stone and sell them for money. But he didn't know it. Thinking of this, Gowther pointed directly towards Nami's departure. The figure from behind said, Little thief cat, since you are dishonest, then you can be my navigator. Nami's body stiffened. She didn't expect that she was exposed by Gowther despite being so covert. Thinking of being exposed, she had to become Gother's navigator. She quickly ran away. Gowther watched Nami escape. The figure smiled. Even if she let Nami run for an extra hour, he could catch up with her. But Gowther didn't intend to play this kind of hide-and-seek game with Nami. Thinking of this, he flew over with a Navy Six-style shave in front of Nami. Then he stopped her. How did you get here so fast? Nami was a little flustered when she saw Gowther. She didn't expect that she had already run away early. But she was still chased by Gowther. Since you stole my things, then you can be my navigator. Gao Se lowered his head and looked at Nami. Nami looked obviously nervous. She shook her head and said, I didn't take it. If you didn't take it, what is this? 
Gowther took out a pair of diamond gloves directly from her pocket. The atmosphere at this time was very awkward. Nami also knew that she could no longer pretend. She complained, obviously you are so rich, it doesn't matter if I take a little bit of your treasure. But Gowther didn't listen to Nami's sophistry. In order to prevent Nami from escaping, he directly put Nami on his shoulders. Since you took my things, you must be my navigator. This is a steal. Nami gritted her silver teeth. She didn't expect that the man in front of her was worse than her. She was just stealing treasures and things. But this man actually robbed a living person. Gowther didn't care. But just when he was about to take Nami out of the pirate ship, a group of pirates came out with sharp knives. Where is the treasure just now? Did you take that boatload of treasure? Among the pirates, a pirate wearing a captain's hat came out. Theodore had a big gold tooth in his mouth, and he looked like a pirate. He looked at Gowther with a fierce look. He I think he took it. Otherwise, how could Bailey disappear in the entire ship? You must know that he carefully searched the entire pirate ship, and the only suspicious persons were the two of them. It's him, it's him. Nami directly informed Theodore of the person who caused the missing treasure. But then she thought about 4.1 and regretted it. You must know that he and Gowther are grasshoppers on the same rope. If Gowther was killed by the pirate in front of him, the captain took care of it. She won't be any better. Since it was your boy who did it. Hearing Nami's identification, Theodore wanted to pick up a sharp knife and kill Gowther. But as soon as he made eye contact with Gowther, he subconsciously felt deep fear. It took a long time to get over it. He came out of this feeling of fear. But he was not afraid but angry. He was angry that he would be afraid of a young boy. Thinking of this, he raised his sharp knife and wanted to kill Gao Se. Gowther raised the corners of his mouth and chuckled. He didn't expect that the pirate in front of him would dare to use his knife in front of him. Gowther kicked him directly. Theodore was kicked away instantly like a ball. The whole person hit the water. The deck was directly breached, leaving a huge hole. Captain Theodore was blown away. This is too scary. Run for your life. The pirates around saw Theodore being kicked away by Gowther. He fell into the deep sea like a shipwreck. They all panicked. Seeing that Gowther was still trying to attack them, the pirates all they jumped into the sea in a panic. In their opinion, if they encountered a great white shark in the sea, they still had a chance of survival. 27. But if Gowther attacked him, he would definitely be kicked to death like Theodore. Or even it may not be possible to leave a whole body. He is so powerful. Nami couldn't help but cover her exclamation mouth with her hands. She witnessed with her own eyes the scene where Theodore was kicked away by Gowther. The power was simply the most powerful kick she had ever seen in her life. I don't know who is better between him and the evil dragon. Nami looked at Gowther secretly. He was obviously the same age as him but not many years older than him. How could he be so strong? But Nami didn't believe that Gowther could defeat the evil dragon. In her heart, the dragon has always been in her heart. Nightmare. She didn't believe that a random person she met in the East China Sea had the strength to defeat the evil dragon. Put me down. Nami kept struggling. But Gowther just reiterated a sentence. Promise to be my navigator and I will let you down. Nami looked at the rogue and domineering man in front of her, feeling very helpless. Thinking that she still had to collect 100 million belly to redeem the village. She decided to use his other identity to intimidate Gowther. She uncovered that the pirate flag of the dragon pirates is clearly tattooed on his sleeve. You know who I am, I am a member of the dragon pirates, please let me down quickly, or the dragon will deal with you. Nami followed Gowther bossily, but her heart was full of pain. You must know that the dragon pirates had brought her a lot of pain, but she was forced to use this identity to make herself happy. Rescued. Oh. Then you will be my navigator now. Oh what? Don't you know what kind of pirate group the dragon pirates are? That's a big pirate with a bounty of 20 million baileys from the overlord of the East China Sea. Nami didn't expect that Gowther still had such a nonchalant expression, which made her very angry. She told Gowther about the horror of the dragon pirates. The reward is only 20 million belly, which is too low. Gowther smiled. You must know that he is a man with a bounty of tens of billions from the world government, and the evil dragon's 20 million bounty is really going to make him laugh out loud. What does a bounty of only 20 million mean? 
A bounty of 20 million is already much better. You don't understand the horror of the dragon pirates at all. Nami didn't expect that she said it so clearly. Gowther still had a nonchalant expression on his face. Nami thought that it was Gother's first time going to sea, so she didn't know how powerful the dragon was. Is it so powerful? How about this, as long as you agree to be my navigator, how about I help you trample the evil dragon to death? Gowther smiled at Nami. In his opinion, he killed the dragon in exchange for a talented navigator. This deal is really a good deal. Okay, I promise you to be your navigator, let me down first. Nami was helpless. He had had enough of the man in front of him. He even stepped on the evil dragon to death. He really thought the evil dragon was a cockroach. Just agree. Seeing Nami agree, Gowther put Nami down from his shoulders and felt the smooth touch. Nami was a little embarrassed after Nami came down. He didn't expect that Gowther was not only a domineering scoundrel, but also a domineering scoundrel. Scum. Nami calmed down on the ground for a long time before she calmed down. She had already thought about accompanying Gowther after sailing for a while, and then she took the opportunity to slip away. So she asked Gowther, you said you wanted to sailing, so where are you going? Gao Se glanced at 210 Nami. Finally, he decided on his destination. Let's go to Coco West Village. Why? Nami was shocked. She didn't expect that Gowther would choose to go to Coco West Village. This was her village. The evil dragon was there, and her village was occupied by the evil dragon. They were killing people there. Isn't it possible? Gowther looked at Nami. In fact, the reason why she wanted to go to Coco West Village was mostly because of her. After all, Gowther didn't want a navigator who could run away at any time. Anyway, he really couldn't defeat the evil dragon with three punches and two kicks. Just think of it as going there for vacation. Faced with Gother's questioning look, Nami nodded. In fact, it was the best thing for her for Gowther to go to Coco West Village. You must know that it was her village, she there are 10,000 ways to escape. Then my navigator, let's set off now. Gao Se glanced at Nami, and then directly lifted an iron plate to block the hole in the ship. The entire broken ship began to move forward mightily. There really isn't much to gain in this Coco West Village. But fortunately, we have the evil dragon brothers, so we can make a lot of money, ha ha ha. A navy captain with a mouse-like beard laughed loudly at the dining table. Opposite him was the dragon from the Koko Nishi village dragon pirates. Colonel Mouse, as long as we cooperate well, why can't we make a fortune in the East China Sea? The evil dragon looked at Colonel Mouse with a bit of disdain. In his opinion, except for the evil dragon pirates, all pirates and navy in the East China Sea are a bunch of rubbish. And Colonel Mouse is undoubtedly the rubbish among the rubbish. It's just that the evil dragon now needs Colonel Mouse to cover up for him the acts committed by the dragon pirates in the East China Sea. That's why he and Colonel Mouse have a different relationship. Otherwise, in his opinion, Colonel Mouse has nothing to do with their evil dragon pirates. Qualifications to deal with. That's good, that's good. Colonel Mouse finished his drink and left the dragon paradise. He drove a warship and sailed recklessly on the sea. In his opinion, the East China Sea is a the sea is weak, even if there are a few strong pirates. But that's in line with him. So in his opinion, the pirates in front of him are not enemies, maybe they should be called wealth paths. Colonel Mouse, there is a pirate ship coming towards us. The Navy report from Colonel Mouse. Only then did Colonel Mouse realize that there was a pirate ship approaching. But he didn't take it to heart. In his opinion, it was probably his business partner. He had already planned the next one. At what price should the village be sold to these pirates? At this time, Gowther and Nami also saw Colonel Mouse. This is Colonel Mouse of the East China Sea. It was precisely because of his inaction that Coco West Village was occupied by the evil dragon. It can be said that Nami hates Colonel Mouse. You must know that all disasters are caused by Colonel Mouse. And he caused such disasters and still collected military expenses from Coco West Village from time to time. This is simply a slippery slope. It's ridiculous. But Nami didn't dare to offend Colonel Mouse because of his identity. That is the Navy. In the East China Sea, the most strictly controlled sea area by the Navy, going against the Navy is tantamount to seeking death. Anyone who dares to attack the Navy or anyone who is a naval officer will be recognized as a pirate. 
Arrest them directly and issue a reward order. Colonel Mouse, what a character. Gowther couldn't help laughing when he saw that a mere colonel dared to stand in front of him. You must know that back then, he even killed a vice admiral. For a mere colonel, it can be said that he killed countless people. Count. When Nami saw Gowther walking to the bow of the ship, she suddenly felt bad. In his opinion, Gowther was simply a time bomb. If he didn't enter, he wouldn't take the evil dragon seriously. Now even the navy she didn't take it lightly either. This was too arrogant. But she couldn't separate herself when she wanted to take the helm, so she could only watch Gowther walk to the front of the pirate ship. Which pirate is he? Find him for me. Colonel Mouse asked his men to find Gother's reward order. He wanted to know what kind of reward the other party had, and then he decided what tone to use to tell him talk. But after searching for a long time, his men did not find a reward order related to Gowther. Colonel, there is no reward. If there is no reward, then he is a newcomer. Thinking about this, Colonel Mouse wanted to communicate with the young pirate in front of him with a slightly unruly expression and look. He stepped onto the bow of the warship. Just when he wanted to speak. He saw Gowther in the distance suddenly take out a sword from the air. I saw him holding the hilt of the sword and pointing the sword towards the warship. Could it be that he wants to declare war on us? For a moment, all the sailors around Captain Mouse were surprised. They didn't expect that Gowther actually took out his sword and pointed it at the warship. Did he still think that he could attack the warship from a distance? You know, this is a swordsman's ability. It. S. A. Pity that in the East China Sea, the weakest sea, even swordsmen are extremely rare. But just after they thought about it, Goes moved, and saw that he just struck a violent chop with a casual sword. This chopper was sharp and fast, flying directly towards the hull of the warship. I saw Colonel Mouse's expression changing from unruly to frightened, and from frightened to panic. In the end, he was so frightened that he couldn't even stand. Stable, he lay down directly on the ground. But this had no effect at all. The sword light of Gauss directly split the warship into two. The people on the warship were also evaporated by the sword light. No navy could survive. This sword, Nuo Jiao Jiao comes down. Kill you, Colonel Rat. Nami saw this scene. She put down the rudder and ran over in panic. Just kill them, they're just a bunch of fools. Gowther didn't care at all. In the Battle of the Valley of the Gods, he killed many naval admirals. Not to mention a mere mouse in a colonel uniform. Are you a swordsman? Nami looked at Gowther with her wonderful eyes. She didn't expect that Gother's swordsmanship was so superb. The sword he just struck looked like the legendary swordsman. After all, only swordsmen can release sword energy. You can think so. Gao Se didn't say much. He is actually more than just a swordsman. In the true sense, he is actually a great swordsman, and he is the top one. Arrive. Nami led Gao Se to Kokoyasi village. And Gao Se began to look at everything in Kokoyasi village. Although there were row upon row of houses, the houses had their eaves closed tightly, as if they were guarding against something. Find me a place to live first. Gao Se looked at the sky getting dark and said to Nami. I'll arrange accommodation. Nami looked at Gao Se in disbelief. He didn't expect that Gao Se would actually ask her to arrange a place to live. Wouldn't that mean she would arrange for him to live in her own home? He was thinking of running away. How could he reveal his location to him? But just at this moment, Ken Suk, who was in charge of guarding, came over. Nami, why don't you go home? Ken Suk asked kindly. But Nami looked helpless. She didn't expect that her identity would be exposed just after arriving at Coco West Village. But she didn't know that Gowther had already known everything about her. She did all this. It was just a one-man show. Nami looked at Gowther, and Gowther also glanced at Nami. In the end, Nami was defeated and could only find a place for Gowther to live. And the place where people can live in Coco West Village there was only one. That was her home. Nami took Gowther to her and Nokigao's home. Gowther unceremoniously picked the fruit from the tree and ate it. I planted this. Nami was quite upset. She didn't expect that Gowther started picking oranges to eat without the permission of the owner of the room. But Gowther just glanced at Nami. Then he picked a few more. Nami suddenly pinched her waist. He looked at Gowther angrily. But Gowther remained unmoved. In the end, Nami was discouraged. And Nokigao brought another plate of oranges in the evening. 
Yowther did not taste more. Said to be honest, he didn't eat any delicacies when he was in rocks. He just ate a few more oranges from Nami just to annoy her. However, Nokigao's friendly way of treating others gave Chi him a lot of favor. This also made him it was decided to help them eradicate the evil dragon tomorrow. At night, Yowther woke up. He looked down through the window eaves. Noki and Nami were burying stolen treasures. Although these treasures could not enter Gother's house. Ah. But Gowther also knew very well how difficult it was for Nami to steal these treasures. Fishman. Gowther suddenly felt something. He saw two murlocs watching Nami bury the treasure in the dark. No wonder, Colonel Mouse knows where the treasure is. Gowther remembered that Colonel Mouse would send people to dig up these treasures later. And the location of these treasures was actually told to him by the evil dragon. This also shows that the evil dragon has been monitoring Nami for a long time. He has already prepared and waited for Nami. The idea of collecting 100 million baileys and then leaving nothing. I'll collect the interest from you two fishmen first. Gowther felt that the villagers here were quite friendly. In addition, he was particularly dissatisfied with the dragon pirate's attempt to let the fishmen climb on top of human beings. It was precisely because of these two reasons that Gowther was dissatisfied with the fishmen. He had a murderous intention. Gowther opened the window and jumped directly into the jungle in one step. And this place was the only place where the two fishmen must pass. Two murlocs walked by. They saw Gowther standing in front of them. Humanity. If you stay up late, don't you know you can't go out in the evening? Pele or not, hand over all the Pele you have. Because they have been oppressing humans for many years, these fishmen did not panic when they saw Gather. Instead, they looked arrogant and domineering. They were even happy that they could make a lot of money again this time. But they didn't know that their death was coming. Yao Sei took out his sword from the system space and used a shave to pass through the two murlocs in an instant. The two murlocs didn't even react. They wanted to say something. But Gowther just said coldly, If you have anything to say, go to the underworld and say it. A bloodline appeared on the necks of the two fishmen. Then the two necks were broken immediately. Before that, there were expressions of disbelief on their faces. They did not expect that they would be killed by a human. Gowther shook the sword in his hand. He had attacked with the smallest strength just now. Unexpectedly, these two fishmen didn't even have the strength to struggle. It really disappointed him. Gowther wanted to use the moon step to return to the room directly. But unexpectedly, the window in his room had been closed. Thinking that it should be Noki Gao and Nami. Gowther didn't care and walked back to the house. What did you just do? Nami was a little nervous. You must know that she was hiding treasure just now. But when she went back, she found that Gowther was missing. Then Gowther came out of the door. This made her wary. Don't worry, I don't like these treasures of yours. You've seen it all. Nami was shocked. After hearing these words, she realized that Gowther had seen them hiding the treasure. Not just me, the fishmen also saw it. Gowther said it directly. Fishmen, members of the dragon pirates. Nami reacted instantly. It turned out that the evil dragon had already known where she hid the treasure. I have already taken care of this person. Could it be? Nami was shocked and thought of Gother's previous style. The, kill, he said was probably, kill. But Gowther went back to the room without saying anything. Early the next morning. Then a fishman knocked on the door. Nokigao and Nami went to open the door. And Gowther was also awakened by the knock on the door. Fishman. Gowther looked out the window and saw that it was a murloc. He was startled. He immediately understood that the two murloc corpses must have been discovered yesterday. Thinking of this, he calmly walked downstairs. He happened to find Nuauchi high heels. Nami is arguing with the fishman. I've already said that the fishman's death has nothing to do with us. I am also a member of the dragon pirates, don't you believe me? Nami and Noki Gao were arguing. But just at this moment, Gowther came out. He looked at the approaching murlocs and said coldly, it seems you are looking for me. Who are you? How come I haven't seen you before? The fishman looked at Gowther with a ferocious expression. They used to be domineering in front of the villagers of Kokoyasi village. How could they tolerate a mere human being showing off in front of them? Aren't you looking for the person who killed the fishman yesterday? It is me. 
Yowther looked at these murlocs and directly admitted that he did it. After all, the murlocs in front of him were nothing to mention. He could kill them with just a wave of his hand. He didn't do it, he was panicking. He was wrong. For a moment, Noki Gao and Nami blocked Gother's words. But Gowther didn't hesitate at all. He took out the sword directly from the system's face. Then he slashed towards the fish man with the sword, and the others only saw a sharp slash. The sword light cut the fish man in half. What are you doing? Kruby, the fish man Kadri, was shocked when he saw that the crew members of his dragon pirates were chopped down by Gowther. He didn't react for a moment. He didn't expect that a mere human would dare to offend them. Isn't he looking for the guy who killed two fishmen yesterday? I'm telling him. Gowther looked at Krug. The fishman in front of him was just a leader of the evil dragon. The bounty was probably lower than that of the evil dragon. This made him lose some interest. Human beings, just bear the consequences for the mistakes you have made. Kruby was furious. He didn't expect that the man in front of him not only killed his team members, but also said it openly. Could it be that he looked down on their dragon pirates so much? Thinking of this, Kruby used Thousand Wagshow Fist. This is the boxing technique of fishman karate. The surrounding fishmen saw the boxing technique used by Kruby. They all started cheering for Kruby. Kruby beat that human to death. Kill him and let him see how powerful our murlocs are. Kruby punched. He thought that the seemingly weak human in front of him would defend himself. But he found that Gowther didn't have any defensive posture. He just pointed at his fist with an index finger. Did he want to beat my fist with his index finger? Crowaby suddenly thought of a ridiculous thing. But the posture of Gowther in front of him was clearly what he thought. Gowther, you are a swordsman, slash him with your sword. Nami was worried at the side. She didn't expect that as a swordsman, Gowther didn't use a sword. Instead, he used boxing. It can't be said to be boxing, but the index finger. This is so conceited. Did he really think that his index finger could easily defeat Kruby's fist? But something happened that shocked her the next second. Boom. Gother's extended index finger collided directly with Kruby's fist. Thick smoke was produced for a while. But what was surprising was that Gowther directly defeated Kruby's fist with one index finger. Moreover, the fist bone of Kruby's fist was broken by an index finger. How on earth did you do that? Kruby's face was full of horror. He didn't expect that the fishmen were much stronger than humans. But he was defeated by Gowther with just one index finger. This scene was too embarrassing. Take me to the dragon. Gowther didn't explain. To be precise, he didn't bother to explain. The rank of the fishmen in front of him was too low. Gowther didn't even have the mood to kill them to gain experience. I won't take you to the evil dragon boss. Kruby looked at Gowther. He didn't want to take humans to dragon paradise. He would rather die for this. Then go die. Seeing that Kruby was determined to die. Gowther smiled and crushed Kruby's head with his kick. Then he looked at the other murlocs. Obviously, the other murlocs didn't have Kruby. Such toughness. After seeing Gowther kill Kruby without mercy, they all volunteered one by one. Go ahead, I know Dragon Paradise. I'll take you there now. The villagers present had never seen such a scene before. I was stunned for a moment. You must know that these fishmen used to be very arrogant and domineering. But I never thought there would be such a flattering moment. Walk. Gowther called Nami, and now Nami is also a member of his pirate group. He wanted Nami to experience his power. Nami hesitated, but finally chose to follow. After a while, the evil dragon paradise appeared in front of Gowser's eyes. Not far away is the Dragon Paradise, a three-story building that can accommodate thousands of fishmen and is equipped with a swimming pool. Looking at the Dragon Paradise that is so close at hand. Nami was a little flustered. But Gowther regarded Dragon Paradise as nothing and stepped into it directly. Mu. A sea beast discovered Gother's figure. His name was Mumu and he was the pet of the Dragon Pirates. When he saw Gowther breaking into the Dragon Paradise, he made a warning sound. Gother's expression turned cold after seeing him. He swung his sword directly. Mumu was split into two instantly. The blood clot was cut and fell into the lake instantly. This sea beast that is dozens of meters long was chopped into three, three, and seven with one strike. Noki was worried and Nami chased after her. 
She couldn't help but exclaimed when she saw Gowther cutting the dozens of meters long sea monster with one knife. But Nami was slightly calm, although the scene in front of her was shocking. But she knew that Gowther could even cut a navy warship in two. He was a powerful swordsman. Not to mention such a sea beast in front of her. Maybe he can really defeat the dragon. Nami was a little convinced of Gother's strength after Gowther showed his strength again and again. She was looking forward to the next meeting between Gowther and the dragon. Let's go. Gowther still looked calm after killing the sea beast. To be honest, he had killed a lot of sea kings, let alone sea beasts. Tear. Gowther kept slashing and killing the fishmen on the way to the dragon paradise. And the system prompts kept ringing in his ears. You defeated the murloc and gained 100 experience points. You defeated the fishman and gained 0 experience points. You defeated the murloc and gained 100 experience points. These experience points are simply worthless in Gother's eyes. The smell of blood is nothing more than that. But this was not the case in the eyes of these murlocs. They watched Gowther continue to kill these murloc companions. The look of fear in his eyes became more and more intense. Some even hid directly in the lake. Some people were guarding the iron gate as if they didn't want Gowther to enter. But is this useful? Gowther would soon tell them that there was no point in hiding anywhere. Gao swung his sword away, and the vast sword energy shone with golden light. He saw this sword energy flying towards the iron gate of the evil dragon paradise. The iron gate was cut off instantly and the power of the sword energy was not reduced at all. Flying towards the dragon paradise. Boom. For a time, smoke filled the air, and the dragon paradise was instantly split into two and destroyed. Because the support column was directly cut and broken. The house in dragon paradise collapsed instantly. Nami and Nokigao instantly felt a sense of joy, it was this large villa. To be precise, it was the evil dragon in the villa that brought endless torture and pain to Kokoyashi village. But as a figure emerged from the smoke in the ruins. Their hearts began to twitch again, because the man who walked out was clearly an evil dragon. A man who made the entire Koko West village tremble. Nami, I've treated you well, but I didn't expect you to bring enemies to attack our dragon paradise. The evil dragon looked at Nami with fierce eyes. He already knew through his fishmen that Gowther was brought by Nami. You must know that the sword energy just now almost killed him, if he hadn't dodged in time. He was probably going to die on the spot. Ah, Nami's voice was trembling, and her fear of dragons seemed to be aroused at this moment. But Gao Se patted her shoulder at this moment. He could see that no one should bully his crew. So he frowned and looked at the evil dragon, and a domineering aura hit the evil dragon. The violent aura directly caused the evil dragon to kneel on the spot, and the countless overflowing auras caused the surrounding fishmen to fall to the ground. Are you a strong man on the grand line? The evil dragon was a little horrified. He didn't expect that Gowther could suppress him with just one look. He didn't know that there was such a thing as domineering domineering power in this world. But he knew that there was no such thing in the East China Sea. Strong. That means the other party is from the Grand Line. Gowther didn't say much to him. He came directly in front of him. Could it be that you are a navy? I know Captain Mouse from the navy. The evil dragon felt that he couldn't even control his body. When he saw Gowther coming to him with the sixth style of the navy, he mistakenly thought that Gowther was the navy. Thinking of the navy Captain Mouse, he couldn't help but climb up. The relationship was established. And Gowther looked at him with a cold face. You messed with my crew, even if you know Garp in 4.6, it's useless. Gowther kicked towards the evil dragon, only to see Eren being pinned down by Gother's feet. But the overlord domineering aura prevented him from moving. Why, he doesn't attack. For a moment, some villagers who were watching the excitement rushed over. They were very happy and a little confused. Why didn't the evil dragon attack? But they didn't know that the evil dragon was suppressed by Gother's domineering aura. Let alone attack. I can't even stand up. He really wants to trample the evil dragon to death. Nami looked at Gao Se in surprise. He didn't expect Gao Se to actually fulfill his words that day. You actually killed the dragon. A few days later, Nami still had not gotten over the shock of Gother's killing of the dragon. He did not expect that Gother's statement about stepping on the dragon to death was not a joke. He actually did it. Gowther looked at Nami helplessly. 
Unexpectedly, Nami was still thinking about the scene where he killed the evil dragon a few days ago. But he had stayed in Coco West Village for too long. It was time to leave now. Thinking of this, he looked at Nami and said, it's time to go. Yes, my navigator. Who is your navigator? Nami said angrily, but then she thought that Gowther helped him kill the dragon. He stopped talking in the middle of his rebuttal. And Nuo Chigao also came in at this time, and he brought a basin of oranges. 27 Gazar was a little confused when he looked at the oranges. You must know that he had eaten oranges for several days in a row in the past few days. It can be said that the orange trees planted by Nami and Noki are about to dry up. By the way, Nami stole your diamond glove and now gives it back to you. Noki Gao took out a pair of diamond gloves from her pocket and handed them to Gowther. She already knew that Nami had stolen these gloves from Gother's hands. Gowther took one look at them and flatly refused, your Kokoyasi village has been persecuted by evil dragons for so many years, so just keep these gloves. Gowther didn't accept it. You know he had a lot of treasures. In his eyes, these diamond gloves were just thrown on the roadside without being picked up. Sister, just accept it, he is quite rich, last time he easily turned into a boatload of treasures. Nami thought of that day, when Gowther made a sudden change and a boatload of treasure came out. That could be said to be the most treasure she had ever seen in more than 10 years. Real. Nogi Gao was a little surprised. She didn't expect Gao Sei to have such ability. Real. Nami said very confidently. Then she asked Gowther to demonstrate it to Noki Gao. But Gowther was unmoved and finally made a condition, unless you change your name to call me captain, I will demonstrate it to you again. Nami was very hesitant. Because if she agreed to change her name as captain, it meant that she would really follow Gowther and be his navigator. But Noki Gao saw what Nami was thinking. Nami, you also want to go on adventures outside. I know your wish since childhood is to wave the map of the entire world. Nogi glanced at Gowther, and then expressed her thoughts, I don't think Gowther is a bad person, so just go with him. As for the evil dragon in the village being killed, the evil dragon pirates are gone, and everyone and I are still in the village, so you can go with peace of mind. Noki Gao saw the worries in Nami's heart and encouraged Nami. Nami said this when she saw Noki Gao. The worries in her heart disappeared, she looked at Gowther and said, Okay, I off on an adventure with you, Captain Gowther. Seeing this, the corner of Gother's mouth raised and smiled. Nami finally gave in, which also meant that he accepted the first crew member. Then Nami wanted Gowther to show off his abilities on the ship at that time. Gother's opinion of herself the crew's request was naturally disrespectful. A large amount of gold coins were transmitted directly from the system space. The gold coins filled the air in front of Nami and Noki Gao. Nami, as a gift for you to become my crew, you can choose any of these treasures. This is only a small part of Gother's treasure. Seeing Nami's eyes filled with stars, he decided to let her pick whatever she wanted. And he suddenly saw Noki Gao. Seeing Noki Gao also seemed a little ready to make a move. Thinking of this, Gao Se decided to be generous to the end. Noki Gao, you too. Yao Se looked at Noki Gao. For a moment, Nami shouted excitedly in the room. Noki Gao also exclaimed in the room. It was nightfall. Kensuke walked to Nami outside the home of Nuauchi Gao. I heard the screams of the two people. I couldn't help but sigh. These three young people are so ignorant of restraint. Early in the morning, Nami and Noki woke up with two dark circles under their eyes. They spent the night selecting among the treasures yesterday. But when they walked out, they found many middle-aged 290 aunts and middle-aged uncles looking at them with the eyes of strangers. Captain Gowther, don't you think this look is a little strange? Nami looked at the surrounding villagers. Although she learned that they were leaving, she also sent her precious blessings. But at the same time, she also sent some festive things. You must know that these are only used by newlyweds. Nothing strange. Gowther didn't feel anything at all. He just felt that their ship was too small and they had to get a big ship. Captain, where are we going? Nami happened to ask Gowther about the direction of sailing at this time. Gowther responded directly, to the Grand Line, the Water City. The Great Route. Nami just remembered that the evil dragon said before he died that Gowther came from the Grand Line. Naturally, this voyage will return to the Grand Line. 
She was a little excited thinking about this. She had already finished drawing the map of the East China Sea. Now she can going to the Grand Line is a new adventure for her. After one day, Nami looked at Gowther behind her angrily. She was extremely angry now. She spent the day rowing alone, while Gowther slept on the boat. Captain, you should paddle too. Nami angrily told Gowther. But Gowther shook his head to show his refusal. Seeing that Nami was showing signs of going on strike, he also felt that squeezing Nami was a bit too much. He decided to let the ship speed up. Gowther threw a Pokemon ball. The Pokemon in the Pokemon ball fell into the water. Nami was suddenly startled by the appearance of the Blastoise. What a creature this is. Nami said in surprise. This was the first time she saw this kind of creature. After seeing it, Gowther told Nami directly, that's the water arrow turtle, my elf. Elf. Do you mean pets? Nami asked curiously. Roughly the same. Thinking that it would be too laborious to explain to Nami, Gowther said directly. Where did you release him from? Nami looked at Gowther curiously. There were too many secrets about Gowther, such as the sudden appearance of Bailey or the sudden appearance of pets. Gowther pointed to the pokey ball next to him, and Nami looked disbelieving. But Gowther didn't explain, and directly commanded the water arrow turtle to speed up the broken ship. Blastoise, pull on that rein. Gowther tied a rope to one end of the boat, and put the other end on the water arrow turtle. Then the water arrow turtle began to accelerate. I saw the water arrow turtle's galloping speed getting farther and farther. And Nami felt the water arrow turtle. After seeing the turtle's astonishing speed, his resentment became even deeper. Even though he had such a good idea, he still had to row for a long time. At the same time, a stormy war broke out in Barati, a sea restaurant not far from them. With them, Luffy, Zoro and Usopp were wearing a straw hat. They looked at the click pirates not far away, who were feasting on food. Worry rose in their hearts. They knew that the click pirates were eating after they are full of food, they will attack the restaurant on the sea. But at this moment, a man and a woman walked into Barati, the restaurant on the sea. This person was Gowther and Nami. Gowther looked at Nami, he was a little helpless. If Nami hadn't insisted on coming to the sea restaurant to taste the delicious food, he would not have set foot in the sea restaurant. But the two soon noticed the tragic situation of Barati on the sea restaurant. At this time, not only the tables, chairs and benches of the sea restaurant Barati were damaged. Even the chef had injuries on his head. Beauty, we are closed. Sanji finally restrained some of his love for beautiful women at this moment. He now regrets that if he hadn't taken in a kin, the creek pirates would not have attacked the sea restaurant Barati at this moment. Why is it closed? Nami was a little curious, but she had a premonition that something bad had happened here. Madam, we have offended the creek pirates, and now they are going to attack us. Chef Zapu came out. He glanced at Nami and Gowther. He didn't want to cause trouble to the two guests. Is it them? Gowther pointed at the people on the click pirates who were eating. That's right, you'd better leave. Zapu responded. After hearing this, Nami didn't want to get into trouble, so she grabbed Gother's hand and wanted to leave. But Gowther just let Nami pull and remained unmoved. Sanji was moved by it. I feel sorry again. Nami is very beautiful now, because Nami picked out one or two decent dresses from Gother's treasures. Coupled with her already delicate face, she no longer looks so plain and simple. There's no need to leave. If I get rid of these pirates, I can have a meal, right? Gowther looked at Zapu. Zapu was a little stunned. He didn't expect Gowther to respond like this. And Usopp also heard it clearly. He began to say to Zoro and Luffy beside him, I didn't expect that in this world, there are people who can brag better than me, Usopp. And Gowther had excellent hearing. He tilted his head and looked at Usopp. Usopp was so frightened by the cold eyes that he didn't dare to say a word. But Zoro saw Gother's eyes and said what was in his heart. Real feelings, this man is not simple. He must be a strong man. Luffy came to the conclusion based on his intuition. But Gowther looked at Zep, as if waiting for his response. If you can drive away the creek pirates, I will cook a feast for you myself. Zapu looked at Gowther. Although he thought it was impossible for the other party to do it, after all, he was so young. But he thought that since the other party was so boastful, he must have his ability. 
But Sanji frowned, he didn't want to let the two of them do it. An outsider, who has killed the king, is looking for death, especially the beautiful beauty next to Gowther. He doesn't want to see the beauty die. You'd better not provoke them, they are the overlord of the sea, Crick. Another overlord. Gowther frowned. He didn't expect that the small overlord of the East China Sea would commit so many crimes. Thinking that the rocks pirates were so powerful that they didn't dare to be the overlord, but Creek dared to do so. He teleported out from the system space. Famous sword Sakura Jew. He's a swordsman. Zoro became interested when he saw that Gowther was actually a swordsman. He looked at Gowther, looking forward to Gother's sword skills. He saw Gowther pointing his sword at the Creek pirates. Then a huge sword light was directed towards the Creek Sea. The thieves attacked. Could this be a swordsman? Zoran was shocked when he saw this sword. He didn't expect that Gowther could make such a huge blow with one sword. A person cannot be judged by his appearance, but he is actually a strong man of the Grand Root. When Jeff saw Gother's attack, he immediately thought of the Grand Line. In his opinion, only the Grand Line has such strong men who can deliver such powerful blows. Compared with the onlookers like them, Click High everyone in the thieves group, including Captain Click, were shocked. Because the sword energy was too dazzling, they did not see clearly who initiated the attack. Is it that guy Hawkeye who chased me all the way here? Click was a little angry. He didn't expect that Hawkeye would not let him go until now. He even chased him from the Grand Route to the East China Sea. No, not Hawkeye. TV Baloo, Crick's subordinate, saw who had used the slash. But in the next second, he, who was called T-Bay, was hit by the slash and was cut in half directly from the middle of his body. Not only his entire Click pirate ship was split in two. But Click himself escaped. But he didn't want to escape. He jumped onto a small boat and threw gas bombs wildly, trying to poison the people in the restaurant on the sea. Everyone. But Gowther just glanced at it. It turns out there is still a fish that has slipped through the net. Gowther turned back and struck a sword. Click was cut in half by the sword. The poison gas bomb also exploded in the air. Long nose, were you calling me bragging just now? Gowther walked up to Usopp. Usopp was stunned at this time, and only heard his subconscious response. I didn't say, I didn't, it wasn't me. The king of liars. When Gowther saw Usopp giving in, he didn't embarrass him. Instead, he turned to look at Jeff. It's time for the chef to prepare a meal for me, remember to satisfy me. Zapu was just like waking up from a dream. He didn't expect that such a strong man from the East China Sea would come to his restaurant on the sea. But he immediately realized that this meal must be well prepared and cooked to satisfy Gao Se. Otherwise, the next disaster will be even more disastrous than what Crick brought. Sanji, hurry up and cook. When Zapu saw Sanji still dazed, he immediately yelled at Sanji. He was really worried that Sanji would anger the guest Gowther. This is too strong, Zoro, can you tell me if he can be our partner? Luffy was simply stunned. He had just gone to sea not long ago, and it was the first time he saw a swordsman able to split a ship in two with one sword. This surprised him extremely. And Usopp heard Lu Fei actually wanted to invite him on the ship, and his face turned pale. He just knew how scary Gowther was. Just standing there made him a little panicked. He would not be alive if he really wanted to invite him on the ship. He quickly refused the invitation to Luffy. Gowther aboard. This is definitely not an ordinary swordsman, he must be a swordsman. I want to challenge him. Zoro didn't expect that he would meet such a powerful swordsman just after he went to sea. And he was still a very young swordsman. Thinking of this, he looked excited. He thought he wanted to challenge Gowther. After all, swordsmen eventually became the strongest by constantly challenging the strong. So his head was hot and he walked directly to Gowther. My name is Sauron and I am a swordsman. Can I challenge you? Zoran gave a swordsman salute to Gowther. He wanted to challenge him. But Gowther just smiled faintly after seeing it. He still had a good impression of Sauron. But he didn't like to be disturbed while eating. So he didn't like to be disturbed while eating. Said. Wait until I finish eating. He actually agreed. Usopp was shocked. He didn't expect Gowther to agree to Sauron's request. He thought Gowther would directly slash at Sauron with his sword. After all, Gowther just slashed so hard with no expression on his face. Multiple people.
Can you be my partner? Luffy saw that Zoro's challenge was accepted by Gowther. So he also wanted to try to pull Gowther on board. But Gowther was quite resistant to this, even if the other party was the protagonist. Cannot. Gowther flatly refused. And Luffy wanted to ask Nami again. Usopp slapped his forehead when he saw this scene. He was deeply worried about the consequences of following Luffy on the voyage, and he was so blind. But Nami seeing Luffy coming over and leaning directly next to Gowther, he sternly refused, I don't agree either. Luffy was a little disappointed. He didn't expect that neither of the two people he invited succeeded. At this moment, there was a strange noise in the remaining pirate fleet of Crick. I saw an equally powerful sword skill heading towards the ships of the Click pirate fleet were chopped off. Several pirate ships were also split into two. And everyone present saw the man holding the sword. He had sharp eyes like an eagle and was wearing a black windbreaker and burgundy red shirt, white trousers and black short sleeves. Holding a cross-shaped black knife in his hand, he sits on a black coffin board-shaped sailing boat. Shichibukai, Hakai Mahak. For a time many people said his name. Hakai Mahak, who is that? Luffy was a little surprised. He didn't understand why so many people knew his name in the sea restaurant. That is the world's greatest swordsman, my goal. Zoro looked at Mahak, and the feeling that his dream was so close made him excited. He shouted to Mahak loudly, Hawkeye, I want to challenge you. You don't want your life. For a moment, everyone turned their attention to Sauron. He didn't expect that a mere brat would actually want to challenge Hawkeye, who had been famous for many years. But Hawkeye didn't notice Sauron, but looked at the main ship of Crick, knife edge divided into two. This is not my sword skill, who is this? Eagle Eye looked at the gap in confusion. After a long time, he noticed that a green algae head was actually calling him. He also threatened to challenge him. However, Eagle Eye did not see a sign of a swordsman in him. Although there is a slight difference, compared with him, it is like a chasm. Green-haired swordsman, do you know who did this? Hawkeye looked at Sauron sharply. But Sauron didn't say anything. So he turned to look at Usopp. Usopp saw Hawkeye's sharp eyes. In addition, he had just heard that the worlds know. One the great swordsman was so frightened that he said it straight away. It was the one inside who did it. Usopp regretted it after saying this. You must know that he can't offend the person inside either. This long nose is so disgusting. Nami had a look of disgust on her face when she heard that Usopp actually exposed them. Gowther didn't say much. In his opinion, the more Nami hates the straw hat pirates, the better. This can reduce the chance of rebellion. Zero point. The one inside. Eagle Eye looked at Gowther inside. His face was so young that he could use such a powerful slash. Eagle Eye had no doubt because he saw a powerful aura in Gowther. He is indeed a strong man. Strong man in the restaurant, do you want to compete with me? Eagle Eye Mahawk challenged Gowther in the sea restaurant to a fight. For a moment, Zapu was a little surprised, but he knew Eagle Eye's style. Only swordsmen he recognized would be challenged by him, which also represented the sea restaurant the man recognized by Hawkeye. I reject. Gowther refused directly. He had just seen Hawkeye's sword moves. In his eyes, this was just the level of Roger back then. In his eyes, Roger's level of sword skills was no longer enough for him. He actually refused. Doesn't he have a strong heart? Zoro was stunned for a moment. He didn't expect Gowther to refuse. You must know that a swordsman never refuses other people's reasons. Why? Eagle Eye Mahawk was also a little confused. This was the first time he saw such a swordsman. No reason, because you are too weak. If you want to challenge me, defeat the green algae-headed swordsman first. Gowther responded truthfully. He mainly didn't want to be disturbed by other people while he was eating. After Sauron was defeated, he could easily get rid of Hawkeye. It wouldn't take much effort. He was underestimated. Eagle Eye Mahawk's eyes were a little cold. This was the first time he was underestimated. He wanted to see if the other party had the strength. Thinking of this, he looked at Sauron and said, In this case, you should fight with me first. One game. Zoro didn't expect the surprise to come so suddenly, and he realized that he had misunderstood Gowther. He gave Gowther a swordsman salute and walked towards Hawkeye. I'll use this knife to deal with you. Hawkeye took out the toy-like knife on his chest. 
He glanced at Sauron and said, this knife is enough to deal with you. Zoro was a little angry. He didn't expect Hawkeye to actually take out a knife smaller than a fruit knife. Zoro picked up the sword and used his three sword style to attack Hawkeye wildly. However, his sword had no way to break through Hawkeye's defense. In the end, he was injured all over by Hawkeye. But Zoro's tenacious spirit Hawkeye recognized it. He finally pulled out his black sword and came out. Use your best, otherwise you will have no chance. Zoro was excited when he saw that Hawkeye finally became serious. He decided to use his strongest three sword style, the secret of 3000 worlds, to fight against Hawkeye. Hawkeye also used his own slashing attack. The two people's sword skills collided with a loud noise. Gowther looked at their attacks and smiled. Because he gained new skills through the system. You have observed the 3000 worlds of the three sword style secrets, do you choose to master them? Master. Zoran's sword skills are still very interesting to Gowser. After all, Sauron will definitely become a powerful swordsman in the future. And his sword skills can be said to be not weak at all. It's just that Soren's current body functions are not fully developed yet. When you can use this sword skill. You have mastered the 3000 worlds of the three swordsman style. Because you have many sword skills and a deep understanding of sword skills, your sword skills have been upgraded to intermediate level. It turned out that I was already intermediate as soon as I learned it. The smile on Gother's face grew stronger and stronger. At this time, Hawkeye also found him. I have defeated him, now please fight me. Hawkeye Mahawk looked at Gowther. Everyone else's focus was on Gowther. Including Zoro, Sanji, Luffy. And Gazer had just eaten the last bite of spaghetti at this time. Good. Gowther did not refuse. He looked at Hawkeye. And Hawkeye also looked at him. Gowther jumped to the sail where Hawkeye Mahawk was standing. It turned out to be Yubu. Hawkeye Mahawk was a little curious. He didn't expect Gowther to know the Navy's moves. But he thought that some bad sailors in the Navy had defected. It's not surprising that some pirates know the six moves of the Navy. My time is precious, please hurry up and click, 527. Gowther looked at Mahawk. In his opinion, Mahawk was too lazy. He didn't even launch an attack now. That fierce guy is actually urging Hawkeye Mahawk, you know, he is the greatest swordsman. Usopp was shocked. He didn't expect that Gowther was still urging him when facing Hawkeye Mahawk. Aren't you afraid that Hawkeye would chop him with a knife? Zoro even lost to him. Puff. It's just that at this time, Nami brought a big cake and smashed it directly on Usopp's head. This person was Nami, and she said to Usopp angrily, stop slandering my captain. Luffy and Zoro could only remain silent at this time. After all, Usopp was at fault first. Gowther and Hawkeye launched the first wave of attacks. Hawkeye slashed out a black curved sword. Chi. The moment the sword Chi was released, it struck towards Gowther. Not to be outdone, Gowther used the golden sword Chi to strike towards Hawkeye Mahawk. Boom. Two powerful shock waves struck at there was a mid-air collision, and the sail was torn in half instantly. Evenly matched. Zoro was a little surprised. He didn't expect that Gother's slash would actually tie him with the world's greatest swordsman, Hawkeye Mahawk. But Hawkeye Mahawk knew that this was not a tie. He his sword energy was broken by Gauss's sword energy. However, his eyes were a little excited. This was the first time he had encountered an opponent in swordsmanship in these years. Even the world's greatest swordsman can't defeat him. Nami was a little shocked at this time. She didn't expect that Gother's swordsmanship was so strong. But when she learned that Hawkeye was the greatest swordsman in the world, she was shocked. She didn't expect that Gowther could actually compete with the greatest swordsman in the world as a tie. She obviously always thought that Gowther was an ordinary swordsman. Is this the battle of the strong? This was the first time for Luffy to see a battle of this level, and he became a little excited. Use your strongest move, otherwise you can't beat me. Gowther saw that Hawkeye Mahawk was still testing with his sword. But he had already said that his time was precious and he didn't want to waste it here with Mahawk. Good. Eagle Eye Mahawk now doesn't underestimate Gowther at all. He already knows that Gowther is a master swordsman who is also a great swordsman with him. He thought this directly used his strongest sword. Black Knife Hell. I saw a jet black sword energy coming from Hawkeye Mahawk's sword. Then it formed black webs like threads. 
It was entangled like a piece of black thread, turning into an extremely powerful sword move and striking towards Gowther. In this case, I will use this trick to deal with you. Gowther took out the third knife from the system's face and bit the knife on his mouth. Did he think, it's impossible. Eagle Eye Mahawk felt familiar when he saw this scene. You must know that he had just easily defeated a three-sword style green algae-headed swordsman using this move. And Gother's gesture seems to be that he wants to reenact that swordsmanship. Isn't this my trick? How could he do this and use this move to fight the world's greatest swordsman? Zoro was stunned for a moment. He didn't expect that Gowther could actually know his sword moves. He also used his sword moves to fight against the world's greatest swordsman, Hawkeye. He even suspected that he had seen it wrong. Gowther was only a three-man swordsman. A swordsman with swordsmanship. His moves are the same as his. But the next moment his imagination turned into reality. Nine mountains and eight seas, there is no self, three thousand worlds. Gowther chanted in a low voice, and then rotated the two swords in the air, like windmills, unable to catch the trajectory of the sword moves at all. A sword wind came from the middle of the sword. The fierce sword wind followed the Hawkeyes the black mass sword energy collided. But this time the battle with Sauron was different. Gother's sword wind directly destroyed Hawkeye's black mass sword energy. Then a green sword wave slashed out. Crash. Hawkeye flew backwards. And this undoubtedly shocked many people. They didn't expect that Gowther actually defeated the world's 5.1 greatest swordsman. And he still used the move that the green algae-headed swordsman just lost to Hawkeye Mahawk. It turns out it's not my move. Zoran's eyes were fixed on Gowther. He didn't expect that what he failed to do would be easily accomplished by others. And he still used his sword skills. Let's go, Nami. Gowther got off the sail. Without paying too much attention to other people's eyes, he took Nami away. As soon as he left, everyone whispered. And Sauron knew that he and the world the gap among the most powerful swordsmen. There is a gap of several eagle eyes. You actually defeated the world's greatest swordsman. Nami looked at Gowther in surprise. She didn't expect that Gowther could defeat Hawkeye. You must know that he is the world's greatest swordsman. But she soon discovered that their ship was destroyed by the shock wave of the battle between the two. Now they have no other means of sea transportation. She looked at Gowther and intuitively told her that Gowther must have a way. But Gowther saw Nami's eyes and felt helpless. He had to throw another elf ball. What is this? Nami looked at Gowther curiously. She didn't expect that Gowther was like a treasure bag. He could always come up with something new. Charizard, stop talking nonsense, let's go find the next crew member. Gowther asked Charizard to lean down. Then he asked Nami to go up. The two of them dared to go to the next target point. 27 Gowther had already chosen the next target. It was Barak Studio, the crocodile hand of Shichibusi Sand Crocodile. Nico Robin, the vice president. The son of a demon wanted by the navy and the world government. Thinking of this, Gowther raised his head and flew towards the kingdom of Alabasta. This is too beautiful. Nami felt the speed of the wind in the air, and her heart was filled with joy. She never thought that one day she would be able to soar in the sky on a flying dragon. Thinking that all this was brought about by Gowther, her wonderful eyes were flowing around Gother's body. And Gowther was looking ahead. He let the Charizard fly high deliberately. But even this could not hide the figure of the Charizard. He flew over Rog Town and over the Twin Gorges. Taking care of the whales in the Twin Gorges Crocas, the former ship's doctor of the Roger Pirates, accidentally looked up at the sky. He happened to see Gother's figure riding a fire-breathing dragon and leaping past. He was slightly stunned. Could it be that I'm dazzled? Crocas was a little absent-minded and rubbed his eyes. He just seemed to have seen the strongest pirate Gowther and his pet Charizard who had disappeared for nearly 40 years. But he shook his head and denied this result. If it is really Gowther, then he should be over 50 now. He should not look so young. And he has disappeared for 40 years. He should not appear at this moment. Arrive. Gowther looked at Alabasta, a desert. At this time, Alabasta has been experiencing drought for three years. And the country's Princess Weiwei is looking for the cause of the drought. And the Sand Crocodile Crocodile is planning for Alabasta. The ancient weapon Pluto. And Gowther and Nami also got off the Charizard. 
Nami also saw the scene where Gowther used the Poke Ball to collect the Charizard. Where is this place? Nami was a little curious. The speed of the fire-breathing dragon was too fast. In a short time, she crossed the upside-down mountain and arrived in Alabasta. This is the kingdom of Alabasta. Gaose replied to Nami, and then ignored Nami. He planned to go directly to Baroque Studio to ask for Robin. After all, he was also a little curious about what happened 800 years ago. But the Baroque Studio is very hidden. Gowther had better find someone from Baroque Studio first. Just when Gowther was thinking this, there was a sudden commotion ahead. They are a group of members of Baroque Studio, and they are hunting down some guys who dare to maliciously slander Baroque Studio. And Gao Se suddenly brightened up because he saw a familiar guy. They are codenamed Miss Wednesday Weiwei. There is also Miss Merry Christmas Dorothy, Mr. Five, and Mr. Four. Now Weiwei doesn't look good. Don't run away, Weiwei, we already know that you are the princess of Alabasta, now come with us back to Baroque Studio to face trial. Dorothy is a short and fat old woman. She looked at Weiwei with a pair of extremely pointed eyes. Unfortunately, Weiwei had a fast running duck and they couldn't catch up. And Gowther and Nami were in front of them. Weiwei saw when there was someone in front of him, the running duck immediately deviated from the direction and ran away. But the people in Baroque Studio were arrogant and domineering. Mr. 4 Bibu 337 even picked up a hammer and tried to kill Gowther and Nami as an eyesore. The person was smashed to death. It's just that he found the wrong person. Gowther showed a domineering look. In just a moment, the three cadres of Baroque Studio fell to the ground. Strong. Weiwei felt the huge noise behind her, and couldn't help but look back out of curiosity. As a result, she found that several members of the Baroque Studio who were chasing her were already lying on the ground. In front of them stood a ten-year-old young people. Could it be that he did it? Weiwei was a little surprised. She was obviously the same age as him, but how could she burst out with such powerful power? Thinking of the power needed to save the kingdom, Weiwei inadvertently approached Gowther and the others. Are you all from Baroque Studio? Gao Se looked at several members of the Baroque Studio and asked. Several people wanted to stand up forcibly, but the heavy strength prevented them from standing up. So they could only nod obediently and admit their identities. Then you must know where the base of Baroque Studio is. Gowther looked at a few people. Several people trembled when they came into contact with Gother's cold gaze. You must know that they have not been able to move until now. In the end, they were defeated by Gother's eye offensive. And Gowther also they learned the location of Baroque Studio. Just when he and Nami were about to leave, Weiwei followed. She asked the two of them, why are you looking for Baroque Studio? Gowther then turned around. This was what he expected. With Weiwei's personality, he would definitely stop them. And Gowther turned to look at Weiwei. Since you are the princess of this country, you must know that drought is related to the Baroque studio. Gao Se looked at Weiwei. Weiwei's pupils were slightly dilated. She was just suspicious at first. But Gao Se said it truthfully. How did Baroque studio do it? Weiwei frowned. What she has been puzzled about is how Baroque studio did it. How to make Alabasta dry for three years. I don't know about dancing fans, you know. Yao Se looked at Weiwei. Weiwei was a little dazed. Of course she knew that using dancing powder can achieve artificial rainfall in a certain place. But the next place in that place will suffer from drought. The owner of Baroque Studio, Sand Crocodile Crocodile, sprinkled dancing powder on top of Alabasta, and used the power of the sand fruit to extinguish the rain. This led to your three-year drought. Yao Se directly told the whole story without giving in. Weiwei was a little shocked when she heard it. The mastermind behind Baroque Studio turned out to be the Shichibukai. Weiwei's face turned ugly. You must know that the Shichibukai are quite powerful pirates. Especially on the sea, they have the privilege of plundering. In other words, it is not a crime for the Shichibukai to plunder civilians. As long as they pay enough tribute, then it is a legal act. It's the Shichibukai again. Nami thought of Hawkeye, the Shichibukai whom Gowther had just defeated not long ago. She thought that it had only been a few days since she defeated Hawkeye. Now she encountered another Shichibukai. She couldn't help but worry about Gowther for a while. The Shichibukai is nothing. As long as you pay enough, I can deal with the sand crocodile for you. 
Yao Se looked at Wei Wei with a smile. This was his purpose. Pay enough, what do you want? Wei Wei was a little wary when she heard Gother's words. But then she thought about it, Alabaxton had nothing to offer the man in front of her. If you give me ten devil fruits, I can help you get rid of the sand crocodile. Gowther said this, thinking of his Benjilas who still needed ten devil fruits to super evolve. Ten devil fruits. Wei Wei was a little surprised. You must know that these are ten devil fruits. With their current financial resources, Alabasta will definitely not be able to get them. Of course, you can also owe money. Of course Gowther also knows that Wei Wei can't get ten devil fruits. But he doesn't ask her to take them now. What Gowther wants now is just a promise from Wei Wei that's it. Wait until the situation in Alabasta is settled. Alabasta's economy will get better. Why should Gowther worry that she can't get ten devil fruits? Don't agree. Gowther turned his head. He decided to use some tricks before Princess Wei Wei would give in. I promise you. Wei Wei was really panicked when she saw Gowther leaving. She thought that Gowther was the only person who had revealed the mastermind to her in so many years and was completely sure to help her settle the matter. She made up her mind. I agreed, but you have to make sure it rains in Alabasta. Wei Wei is not an idiot and made her own request. Okay, now take me to the base of Baroque Studio. Gowther raised the corner of his mouth slightly and let Wei Wei lead the way. Dealing with the sand crocodile was just a piece of cake for him. Besides, he wanted to snatch away Nico Robin, the only one in the hands of the sand crocodile who knew the text of history. In the eyes of the sand crocodile, I guess they are already mortal enemies. Since they are mortal enemies, then Princess Vivi's request was just taking advantage of the situation. Not much effort was wasted. Nami was a little surprised to see Gother's greed. Only then did she realize that Gowther was actually right. Something is obsessed with. However, this thing is a devil fruit, not Bailey. Gowther followed Princess Vivi to the Kingdom of Alabasta. At this time, the Kingdom of Alabasta was in chaos. And there was Princess Vivi's guide, Gowther, quickly, well, came to a place called Spider Cafe. According to Princess Vivi, the headquarters of Baroque Doll is set up here. And Vivi saw it as soon as she opened the door. Baroque studio officer Miss Fingers her father with both hands. Princess Wei Wei, I didn't expect you to fall into a trap. Miss looked at Wei Wei with both hands. She was a little surprised. Apparently Baroque Studio had sent people to hunt down Wei Wei. But in the end, Wei Wei broke into the headquarters and brought two people over. Just when she was about to take action. At that moment, Gao Se came directly in front of her and put a finger gun on the back of her neck. Fear lingered in Mrs. Hart for a while, and she didn't even notice Gao Se's speed clearly. Open the secret passage door. Gathel's cold voice sounded behind Mrs. Fingers. Miss still wanted to resist with her fingers, but Gother didn't give Miss a chance to resist. He directly kicked her on the coffee table. Open it now. Although Gother's kick reduced its strength, it was not something that Mrs. Fingers could resist. Miss felt severe pain in both fingers. She did not open the secret door, but she sounded the alarm. And Gowther seeing that Miss was so stubborn with both hands, he killed her with just one finger gun. Wei Wei was a little surprised. She didn't expect that in just this moment, Gowther could kill a Miss Kadri. And this person was Mr. One his partner is definitely the core figure of Baroque Studio. It's just how do we find their whereabouts now. Wei Wei is a little annoyed. You must know that Mrs. Two Fingers are a hidden clue that she found out with great difficulty. But she was killed easily by Gao Se. It's easy. Gao Se just didn't want to waste 900 efforts before. But it was not that he had no choice. He saw Gao Se releasing his domineering energy. In an instant, he knew where the target was. He kicked over and found a door of a secret passage. He kicked him away. This was clearly the home of Baroque Studio. Gao Se walked in. But Wei Wei and Nami were a little confused. They didn't understand how Gao Se discovered this secret passage. Several people walked in not long after, a man with glasses and a hairstyle of three on his forehead stood in front of them. Mr. Galtino 3. Wei Wei called out his name. He can use candles and is a devil fruit user. Wei Wei told all the details about Mr. 3. A person with wax wax fruit ability. Gowther had very few battles with people with fruit abilities. But he didn't pay attention to Mr. CHFE 3 in front of him. 
He saw Gowther rushing up to the sky in one step. Then he used his land co. He rolled up a vacuum on his feet and attacked Mr. Three. Candle balls. Mr. Three wrapped himself into a ball with candles. He used the candles as a weapon to protect himself. But it was obviously ineffective. Gother's land kick directly kicked his candle to pieces. Then he moved towards Mr. Three's body. Attacked and left. Mr. Three was kicked and flew backwards. There was a look of fear in his eyes. This was the first time he saw a guy who could directly break through his defense with one blow. And Gowther not only broke through his defense with one blow, and kicked him seriously. Tell me, where is the sand crocodile? Gowther walked up to Mr. Three and stared at him with a pair of dark eyes. Who is the sand crocodile? I have no idea. Mr. Three really doesn't know who the sand crocodile is. When he saw Gowther, he asked him about a name he didn't recognize. He was frightened and had some doubts. Only then did Gowther remember that Crocodile had never revealed his identity in Alabasta. He only called himself Mr. Zero or President. Thinking of this, Gowther asked Mr. Three again. Where is your president now? But Mr. Three pointed behind Gowther. Only then did Gowther realize that two people were coming behind him. They were Mr. One Dasbonus and Sand Crocodile Crocodile. Needless to think, these two people must have been killed. Miss summoned him with an alarm with both hands. However, he soon discovered that Crocodile didn't look right. Mr. Two. Von Clay who imitates the fruit. Gowther saw the true identity of Crocodile. But Wei Wei couldn't see it. This was the first time she saw Crocodile. She saw that Crocodile actually looked like this. There was a horizontal line on his face. There was a scar like a knife. The palm of her left hand was replaced by a golden hook. She instantly guessed that this was something from the mastermind behind the Baroque studio. At this moment, Fon Clay was still imitating Crocodile's tone of voice. If you don't run away, do you want to try my methods? The words were quite powerful. Both Vivi and Nami's faces became ugly. But Gowther knew that he was bluffing. But even if he was not bluffing, Gowther would not take him seriously. After all, it was just a Shichibukai. Thinking of this, Gowther came directly in front of Fung Clay. Then he punched the sand crocodile that Fung Clay was pretending to be in the face. Fung Clay was instantly knocked back to his original form. How do you know? Fung Clay thought he had guessed that he was a fake, so he covered his face and frowned at Gowther. But Gowther just smiled disdainfully, really thinking that his domineering appearance was fake. The strength of his aura was still there. Sensed. Be careful Mr. One takes action. Although Wei Wei was surprised that Gowther was able to defeat so many strong men, she was quite skeptical about whether he could defeat Mr. One. Mr. One was the strongest man assigned by the president. The blade man who ate the quick slash fruit, possessing invincible attack power. No creature can escape his slashing blows. Mr. One Dasbonus is a tall, muscular man with a monk's hair. The fingers of his right palm turned into blades, turned into tiger claws and attacked Gowther directly. His target is naturally Gother's heart. That's it Mr. One, kill him. Mr. Three was waving flags and shouting at the side. You must know that he almost died in the hands of Gowther just now. His hatred for Gowther is quite strong. Wait for death, Gowther, you just slapped my handsome face like Fon Clay. Fon Clay touched his face, and there were signs of it being sunken. Master the chop. Just when Mr. One was about to put his palm into Gao Se's heart. Gao Se took out a famous sword Ying Ju from the system space without thinking and slashed at Mr. One's tiger claw blade. It's useless, Mr. One's claws are sharper than a knife. Mr. Three pushed up his broken glasses, with a proud expression on his face. But he did not feel proud for long. Gother's knife struck directly at Mr. One, but there was no hindrance. First it swiped Mr. One's finger, and then more smoothly cut off Mr. One's arm. Ah. Mr. One let out a violent scream. Big beads of sweat fell from his forehead. He looked at Gowther with some fear. He didn't expect that Gowther could directly break his quick slash fruit and even broke his arm. He actually won the battle. Wei Wei covered her mouth and looked at Gowther in surprise. Because Mr. One is the strongest combat power of Baroque Studio besides the President. He was easily solved by Gowther. Even Mr. One can't beat him. Mr. Three looked at the scene in front of him in shock, and then looked at Gowther in fear. 
At this time, Gowther had already heard Mr. Three's curse and kicked him directly. Mr. Three directly hit the man behind him. The wall. A big hole was made in the wall. Tell me where your President San Crocodile and Vice President Robin are. Yao Se turned to look at a few people. They are no longer as calm as before. Mr. Three said to Gao Se while showing his heavy injuries. Royal Palace in Alabasta. In the palace. Wei Wei was shocked. She didn't expect to be in the palace. Her father Cobra was in the palace. She couldn't help but worry. But Gowther understood the Sand Crocodile's behavior very well. Because Crocodile came to Alabasta's purpose is to get the ancient weapon Pluto. And his purpose of going to the palace is self-evident. It must be to find the news about Pluto in the ancient text. I have to hurry up and save my father. Wei Wei was a little panicked. She thought that the Sand Crocodile might launch a rebellion. Thinking of this, she looked at Gowther with pleading eyes. Don't worry, I'll do the work after you take the money. I am a very honest pirate captain. Gowther gave Wei Wei an affirmative answer. However, Wei Wei's eyes were complicated. She didn't expect that Gowther turned out to be a pirate. However, Gother's identity as a pirate is really a mystery. After all, this was the first time she saw a pirate group formed by two people. Let's set off without further ado. Gowther asked Bibi to ride on the running duck and walk faster. While Gowther carried Nami on his back, he quickly jumped over Alabasta in a moonwalk. There were endless rebels and kings along the way. The conflict between the army and the army. Because this place has been dry for many years. Countless civilians have to pick up knives and wield them at each other just for a sip of water. This is the Palace of Alabasta. Gowther looked at the Palace of Alabasta. At this time, the place was fully guarded by the king's army. The leader was a middle-aged swordsman wearing a green robe. Princess Wei Wei, the king has been looking for you for a long time. Where have you been? The middle-aged swordsman's mood relaxed a little when he saw Princess Wei Wei. But his eyes were full of caution towards Gowther and Nami who appeared next. Uncle Yaka, they are my friends, not bad people. Wei Wei smiled sweetly, then thought about the current situation and frowned. I got the news from both of them that the three-year drought in Alabasta was not caused by my father. It was caused by the use of dancing powder by Baroque Studio, and their president is actually Shichibu Keisha Crocodile. Wei Wei told everything. After hearing this, Yaka's face darkened. As expected, it was Baroque Studio that did it, I'm going to deal with them now. Yaka picked up the sword and wanted to go directly to the palace to kill Crocodile. Uncle Yaka, my two friends should be of great help, especially since he is very strong. Wei Wei then introduced Yaka's identity to Gowther and Gowther, he is Yaka, the captain of our Alabasta Guard team, and also the patron saint of our kingdom. And just when Wei Wei was introducing Gowther, Yaka was also looking at Gowther with his eyes. It was just that Gother's too young appearance made him question it. Wei Wei, forget about your two friends. They are not strong enough to deal with the Shichibukai, and they may be in danger and die. Questioned. Yao Se sighed secretly. They are really strong. Wei Wei wanted to defend herself, but Yaka walked away. Obviously she didn't take Wei Wei's words to heart. Wei Wei was very anxious, and she led Gowther and Nami to follow. The guard originally wanted to but at this moment, Wei Wei has the identity of a princess. The guards saw that Princess Wei Wei insisted on bringing two strangers in. For the sake of their jobs, they still did not dare to stop them. As for Wei Wei, Yao Se, and Nami, the three before I even reached the palace. I heard the sound of a conflict between Gaka and Sand Crocodile. I already know your true identity is, 167. You are Crocodile, the king of the Chiwahai, and you have killed countless people. What are you talking about? Even in the desert environment, the sand crocodile was still wearing a black fur coat and an orange plaid shirt. He looked at Yaka with a gloomy face. He didn't expect that his identity would be exposed so quickly, but for his plan, he I'm still going to tolerate it for a while. Yaka what are you talking about? How can you wrongly accuse someone, after you know that he killed many pirates for our alabasta? Cobra didn't know the truth. He thought Yaka heard the rumors from somewhere. He even wanted Yaka to apologize. But Yaka obviously believed Wei Wei's words more. He looked at K. Lauptal said. It's because your Baroque studio keeps spreading dancing powder in the upper reaches of our kingdom. 
Otherwise, how could we in Alabasta have experienced a three-year drought since we arrived there? Really. For a while, everyone believed it, because the time when the sand crocodile appeared was so coincidental. Just after he came, there was a drought in Alabasta for three years. But Crocodile saw that he could no longer hide the matter. His face his expression gradually distorted, and he looked at Yaka angrily. Since you have exposed my identity, you should know the consequences of exposing my identity. The Sand Crocodile's anger is real. You must know that he has been planning for this for three years. But these three years of planning were shattered by Yaka. I saw a lot of sand from Alabasta condensed on his left hand. Soon his left hand formed a sand blade and he swung it fiercely. Several guards on the scene were directly whipped away. But flying away was obviously not the full ability of his shasha fruit. I saw that they were being all the water in the drawn enemies was sucked out of their bodies. The guards who continued to lose water naturally turned into mummies. And Yaka also felt a little surprised. He did not expect that the seven warriors under the king would be so strong. Robin takes control of Cobra. Crocodile didn't forget to find something for Robin around him to do. Okay, President. I saw Robin crossing his arms. In just a moment, Cobra's body grew two arms. And he held Cobra's arms tightly. Ha ha. It was too late for you to know. Now the people outside know that I am a great hero. As long as you are dead, no one will know. Sand Crocodile laughed wildly, and now it didn't matter to him whether to expose or not. Over the past few years, his character has become stable, and his reputation has even surpassed that of King Cobra. As long as these people are dealt with, there will be no worries. Don't even think about it. Yaka pulled out the sword from his waist and turned into the animal devil fruit jackal form. His speed and attack power were greatly improved. He slashed the drawn sword towards the sand crocodile. The sand crocodile didn't seem to notice Yaka, and he remained motionless. Yaka stabbed the sand crocodile in the chest with his sword. Was it a hit? For a while, everyone thought that Yaka's blow worked. He is worthy of being the strongest man in Alabasta. Cobra sighed. As long as he kills the sand crocodile, the crisis in Alabasta will be over. Even if he, the king, dies, he will have no regrets. No, this texture. The jackal suddenly felt something was wrong. His sword felt like it was cutting into the sand. Robin also sighed silently in his heart at this time. What the sand crocodile swallowed was the natural sand fruit. He can completely element transformation. And Yaka is just an object played by the sand crocodile. You are happy too early. The sand crocodile's body turned into a ball of yellow sand and floated away in the wind, and then condensed behind Yaka. I saw the sand crocodile stabbing Yaka hard with the scorpion hook of its left hand. I saw Yaka stretched out his hand. He tried to block it but was stabbed through his arm. Soon his arm began to show symptoms of rot. But the sand crocodile was not finished. He stretched out his right hand, and a ball of yellow sand appeared in the palm of his right hand 5.6. I saw yellow sand in the palm of his hand. It continued to appear like a whirlpool, and then a hand was about to press on Yaka's forehead. Lord Gowther, please take action quickly and help me save Yaka. Princess Weiwei looked at Gowther anxiously. Gowther said bluntly, it's okay to save him, but it's an extra price, three devil fruits. Good. Weiwei was so worried now that she dared not say a word. Gowther saw this and walked up to the sand crocodile, and then kicked him over. This time, the sand crocodile had no chance to become elemental, and Gowther had a band on his feet. With domineering attitude. Learned the location of the underground burial ceremony hall. Gowther rushed over. When he actually comes to this place. Robin was found studying the historical text. Although Gother's footsteps were light. But Robin's escape experience is rich. Gother's arrival was soon noticed. Did you defeat Crocodile? Robin looked at Gowther in confusion. She knew Crocodile's strength quite well. It's definitely not that easy to defeat, if it's too easy to defeat. Then what's the point of being a member of the Shichibukai? Follow me. Gowther looked at Robin. He already recognized Robin as his crew member. Don't even think about it. Robin frowned and crossed his hands, and three hands grew out of Gother's body. But Gowther directly used the Navy Six-style iron block and armed color domineering to protect his body. Robin's attack had no effect. Sure enough, it's the navy. 
Robin's eyes revealed a look of despair. When she saw Gowther perform shave, she understood that Gowther was a marine. Otherwise, how could he have the sixth form of the navy? There are many marines who have been chasing her over the years. Many marines know these navy six styles. This is why she had an angry expression when she heard that Gowther was taking her away. You think I'm a marine? Gowther was a little surprised when he heard this. He finally knew where the crux between them was. But he didn't think too much. He directly released Bulbasaur and tied up Robin with a vine whip and took him away. He was not interested in Hades at all. He was not even interested in reading this historical text. When he walked out of this place, Nami was a little shocked. She did not expect that Gowther only entered the burial sacrifice hall for such a short time. Another woman was robbed. And this woman was clearly their enemy. Lord Gowther, what are you doing? Wei Wei felt that this scene was a bit too exciting, and her cheeks turned red with embarrassment. It's nothing. Am I not recruiting crew members? Gowther said matter-of-factly. But Nami felt a little uncomfortable after hearing this. She couldn't help but complain. You recruit crew members by robbing. Yes. Gao Sei said confidently. He didn't think there was anything wrong with this. Then he turned to look at Wei Wei. We are leaving next. Remember to return the 13 devil fruits to me. After Gowther finished speaking, Wei Wei brought out a wooden box, which contained three devil fruits. These three will be returned to you first, and the rest will be given to you later. Wei Wei is honest and trustworthy, and began to rummage through her family's treasure trove as soon as she returned. It was not easy to find these three devil fruits. After receiving the fruits, Gowther looked at the sand crocodile that had been beaten to pieces by Bankalas. At this time, the sand crocodile looked suspicious of life. It seemed that he didn't know why he ended up like this. Although Robin had already guessed, she was still a little surprised to see the severely injured sand crocodile. She didn't expect that the sand crocodile actually turned out to be a real person. He was defeated, and was beaten into such a miserable state. Time to go. Gowther asked Wei Wei for a merchant ship. Mainly because he was worried about Robin escaping secretly or playing tricks. But if you have a ship, you don't need to worry too much. After all, Gowther believed that having him on the ship would ensure everything was safe. Just right, you can also play the role of Nami Navigator. More than ten days later, Gowther and others arrived at the water capital. And Robin also learned from Nami's mouth that this was a pirate ship instead of a navy ship. Don't you know that recruiting me as a crew member will cause you trouble? Robin found Gowther and looked at him with complicated eyes. Gowther, of course, didn't care. The trouble with him was much more serious than that with Robin. Especially once his identity was exposed, it would definitely lead to the navy and the world government. Endless revenge. I know, but I'm not worried. Gowther looked at Robin and said this. But Robin was very disbelieving. She didn't believe that Gowther would take such a risk for her. After all, she was the son of the devil, and the navy sent out the demon slaying order but did not eliminate her. O'Hara's orphan. I do not believe. I'll make you believe it, Robin the devil. Gowther still looked unbelieving when he saw Robin, and simply revealed her identity directly. You actually know. Robin was a little surprised. She thought that Gowther didn't know her identity, so he dared to recruit her on the ship. But she didn't expect that Gowther already knew her identity. He must also know about her. There is a huge bounty from the Navy, and the Navy is going all out to pursue it. It's time to eat. It happened that at this time, Nami made a delicious meal and brought it in. Nami can cook a pretty delicious meal. Gowther had also thought about recruiting a chef to the ship before. But he thought of recruiting a follower there as a perverted chef on the ship. It's better to let Nami do it. Anyway, it's just to give her more baileys. Gowther has the ability to make money, and he won't be afraid even if it takes 10,000 years. This is enjoyment. Gao Se lay down comfortably in the captain's cabin. Compared with sleeping in the open air, there is no doubt that being on a pirate ship is more enjoyable. His destination is the water city. He wants to change to a better ship. It is best to. A ship with a mechanical propulsion device is modified by Frankie. Thinking of this, he was looking forward to the water capital and his party. With Nami as the navigator. Gowther, the merchant ship, arrived in the water capital more than 10 days later. 
Compared to the Kingdom of Alabasta, the water city is undoubtedly a bustling metropolis. There is a sea train here. It can pass through the sea unimpeded. There is also Carrera Company, shipyards, etc., making this place a must-stop place for pirate merchants. Many pirates who want to go to sea will buy ships here. It's so bustling here. Nami saw that there are many shopping places here. Food, clothing, daily necessities and other items. Her eyes suddenly glowed with gold. You must know that during this period, she often cooked for goes and rubbed shoulders. Burning Bailey can come in handy at this time. But Gowther pulled her over and said to him, first order the boat and then shop. In an instant, Nami's face drooped. Gowther walked directly to the headquarters of Carrera Company. Who are you looking for? A greeter asked Gowther who he was looking for. Gowther blurted out the other person's name. Iceberg. Mayor of Iceberg. Okay, I'll go and report it. Bingshan was quite easy going. It was quite easy to find him. After a while, a woman with long blonde hair, tinted glasses, tight clothes and black fishnet stockings came out. I am Mr. Bingshan's assistant, come with me. Gowther looked at this cold beauty. She knew that the name of the person in front of her was Khalifa. In addition to her apparent identity as Bingshan's assistant, she also had another identity. She was a member of CP9. She was placed by the world government around Bingshan. The main task is to steal the Pluto design blueprint held by Bingshan. After Khalifa's leadership, Gowther quickly arrived at Bingshan's office. Bingshan looked at Gowther, a little confused, he didn't understand him what kind of interaction does he have with the man in front of him. But Gowther said directly, I have something to talk to you about. Can you ask your secretary to step aside? What's going on? My secretary is not an outsider. Bingshan looked at Gao Se in surprise. He didn't understand why he asked his secretary to leave. What he was worried about now was what he would do if his secretary really left. The man in front of him was plotting against him. Regarding Frankie, I think it's best for her to avoid it. Frankie, Khalifa, you'd better avoid it. Bingshan saw that Gao Se was talking to him about Frankie. To be honest, the only person he values most in the world is Frankie. He thought that the other party would actually he came here because of Frankie's matter. But Bingshan wanted to hear Gother's opinion. Of course, Gowther said bluntly. I want you to join forces with Frankie to build a pirate ship for me. Bingshan didn't expect that he asked his secretary to avoid him because of this matter. To be honest, he hasn't had much contact with Frankie over the years, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't take Frankie seriously. Mainly because he has felt that the world government is now thinking about the Pluto design passed down by his master Tom. Besides him, only Frankie knew the drawings of Pluto's design. If there is rash contact, Frankie may be involved. It will be dangerous then. Don't refuse, I can give you a free message. Your secretary is from the world government. She is CP9. And she is just one of the people lurking in your shipyard. Gowther didn't have a good impression of the people in the world government. The next moment, Khalifa was directly exposed. And Bingshan showed a surprised expression as he expected. You are now in a deep whirlpool. I can help you get rid of CP9. You can help me build the ship. How about this deal? Gao Se looked at Bingshan with a smile. Bingshan was still a little hesitant after careful thought. The main reason was that he didn't know whether what Gao Se said was true. But Gao Se quickly revealed a big piece of information. I know that the design of the ancient weapon Pluto is on Frankie. I don't know if this will make you completely believe me. How do you know? Is it Frankie? Iceberg's first thought was that Frankie told Gowther. But then I thought about it, there was no way Frankie would do such a thing. In other words, this is all true. Including CP9 infiltrated his shipyard. I promise you. Bingshan finally agreed to cooperate. And Gowther also came out. He was relieved to see that Robin did not escape. But before he could breathe more, he saw Rob Lukey and others walking towards him. Now Rob Lukey's identity was the foreman of the shipyard. He glanced at Gother's face a few more times, as if to confirm his appearance. It looks like you're being targeted. Robin chuckled. She had seen this look countless times. It was the look a hunter looks at his prey. Maybe it's just sitting back and waiting. Yao Se smiled and said nothing again. In his opinion, even if it is CP9, if he doesn't go to him, he will go to CP9. Not far from the water city. A tall man with a green eye patch, 
riding a bicycle and a layer of ice forming on the water came to the city of water. Nico Robin, I didn't expect you to come to the water city, and there is another guy who defeated the sand crocodile. What a troublesome thing. This person is none other than Aokiji, one of the three top generals of the navy. He originally received intelligence that there were traces of Nico Robin, the son of the devil, in Alabasta. But he didn't expect that he would arrive there. By that time, Nico Robin was gone. Moreover, the Shichibukai sand crocodile was defeated. However, because he did something very shameful, the world government did not hold the person who defeated the Shichibukai accountable. But the matter of the devil's son a major event related to the world government. Aokiji was forced to continue to trace Nico Robin's traces. Yowther walked out of the shipyard. His hockey sensed that there were several auras following him. We are being followed. Robin said bluntly. Yowther nodded. He somewhat admired Robin's crisis intuition. But he also knew that the other party relied on the sense of crisis that he had hidden in the past 20 years to avoid danger. But Gowther thought that he did not there was a need to hide. Thinking of this, he directly entered an alley. This move surprised both Robin and Nami. They did not understand Gother's operation. But Nami had seen Gowther easily deal with 2-7 the process of Wuhai. She vaguely guessed that Gowther might want to catch a turtle in an urn. And Robin happened to think of this. So she followed in. She wanted to see Gother's true strength. Whether he was enough to protect him, she. Strange, is there a trap? Rob Lukey felt something was wrong. But thinking that all their CP9s were out this time. Even if they had traps, they wouldn't be able to trouble them. Thinking of this, he followed. There's no trap, just the three of them. Kaku was a little stunned. He didn't expect that there was no trap in front of him, only Gowther and the two ladies. What did you say in the Bingshan office? Take a trip with us. The first thing Rob Lukey thought of was to ask what exactly they were talking about in Bingshan's office. If you want to arrest me, let's see if you have the ability. Thinking of this, Gowther directly threw out the elf ball containing Bankulas. I saw Bankulas jumping out of the elf ball. What kind of creature is this? Could it be that he is a user with animal devil fruit abilities? Rob Lukey himself is an animal type devil fruit user. When he saw the strange creature summoned by Gowther, there was a hint of curiosity in his eyes. But before his curiosity dissipated, he understood what was in front of him. Huge creatures are not easy to deal with. I saw Bankiras using evil waves. He spit out a large group of black fear sound waves. These sound waves subconsciously this gave these CP9s a fearful mentality. And they began to organize their first wave of attacks. The first one to attack was Gabra, the third person in CP9, who is a user with the ability of the canine fruit. When he saw Bankulus's terrifying size and strength, he chose to take the initiative. I saw him transform into a werewolf form. Then he took the initiative to attack Bankulus. Finger gun, ten finger gun. I saw Gabra clasping his hands together and then fiercely attacking Bankira's chest. But Bankira's just glanced at Gabra with contempt, and directly pushed Gabra away with one hand. But his finger guns and ten finger guns had no effect on Bankula's. This monster is a bit strong, it seems I have to use my full strength. Gabra didn't expect that the first attack he launched would have no effect at all. Even Bankira's fur was not hurt. Rob Lukey was a little surprised when he saw this scene. Gabra's strength was I know. Although he is weaker than him, he can be the number 3 character in CP9. His attack is only strong but not weak. Thinking of this, he decided to re-evaluate the strength of this monster. Monster, I hope you can take this trick. Lanjiao pack of wolves and stars. I saw Gabra kicking out 4 land kicks at the same time. The land kicks kept attacking forward in a jumping manner. They attacked in front of Bankulas at the same time. Gowther laughed when he saw this skillful kick. He decided not to deal with these CP9s so quickly. He could learn all the skills of these CP9s first and then deal with them. You have watched the Lanjiao pack of Wolf Liangxing, whether you choose to master it or not. Master. Yao Sei had a chuckle at the corner of his mouth, and he could use the advanced move of Lanjiao for free. There is no doubt that it is the best. You learned how to use the Lanjiao Pack Wolf Liangxing. As the system's reminder ended, Gowther learned the Lanjiao Pack Wolf Link Star. He could feel that as long as he wanted, he could perfectly reproduce his kick. 
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support our channel.